So welcome to day three. Love it. Well, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Um, excited to be here. I was just kind of going back through my slides this morning. I'm like, oh, this is some, I, I hadn't been back through them since I made them a month ago. I was like, okay, yeah, there's some, there's some good stuff. I think that, uh, we'll be excited to go through and share. Um, so I'm excited to kind of unveil what, what I've been doing, what's been working and, uh, what hopefully you guys can do as well and see some good success and results for your business. Yeah. And if, would it help, um, if, if you guys are watching, would it help if we do a quick recap, give me a one in the chat, in the comments, if you want us to do a quick recap, if not, we can go right into day three and you guys can just watch day two and day one replay. Okay. I see if well, we, and we can do a, I, I can jump in my slides cause I've got like a slide or two on recaps for the okay, perfect for anyone that hasn't jumped in yet. Okay, um, but yeah, just curious for those of you guys, um, just give a yes over in the chat if you guys have been on day one or day two or both. I'm just curious to hear, um, see who's all been on here with us last few days. Yeah. And and by the way, do not comment inside the Zoom chat. When you comment in the Zoom chat, all you're doing is sending me direct messages. Um, no need for that. There is a link to the Facebook streaming. And if you click on that link, It'll take you directly to our Facebook group where we're actually live streaming this session and we're monitoring the comments there, not inside the Zoom chat because we don't save the Zoom chats um, just, just for replay purposes and engagement. Uh, but yeah, looks like there's a ton of ones coming in on that, Jason. All right. Yeah, I'm seeing, I'm seeing them come in. So I'm going to go, I'm starting to go blind here because I'm going to start sharing my slides. And we'll just dive in. I saw someone say enough for the foreplay. Let's get into it. So let's, let's do it, man. <laughs> All right. So who's excited? Um, I'm excited to go through and share with you guys. So day three, um, quick recap of your brand new uh, first day. I know a lot of people, this is already, you know, you've been on day one and two, but we've been talking about how to get hundred, 200 leads per day for your SaaS agency, your agency, really any type of business, this model works. If you want to go the affiliate route, whatever it is, even if you have no following, no money for paid ads. And that's the beautiful thing about it. Um, replays for both days. I know a lot of people always ask about replays there. I know they're on YouTube. I've seen them on YouTube. They're also in the Facebook group. So go through and check those out. Um, but let's get into it. So we've talked about this both days and we're just going to keep with it. This is kind of the agenda of the things that we have been covering. And there, in my opinion, there's four core things to win. And as you guys know, kind of a, a theme that I always like to have is just keeping things simple right? Simplifying things, not like going through, oh, you need all these crazy different things to be successful because you really don't. But these four core things are, in my personal opinion, what you need. So day one, we talked about identifying a specific audience, nailing down a rock solid core offer that speaks to that audience. And then yesterday we talked about the consistent lead flow, how to get eyeballs on that offer and speak to that audience and be able to grab their attention and then today is all about the follow-up. And um, how many of you guys, let me know in the chat on Facebook, how many of you guys have heard the saying, the fortune is in the follow-up? So I come from the real estate space, and that is a very, very common saying, um, that the fortune's in the follow-up. And honestly, um, it, it, it should be the common saying in every industry, because in my personal opinion, that is 100% accurate, all right? And so... Going over here, um, so yeah, quick recap. So specific audience, rock solid offer. This is kind of like that core sales funnel that I'm personally using. And you know, you, you might be looking at this if you're you know on for the first day. I'm like, well, Jason, I'm not going after like affiliates or this other angle. The, the same funnel structure applies. You just tweak the messaging, right? So like if it's real estate, how to generate two to five real estate leads per day or how to book two to five appointments or or how to get more patients in the door, like whatever it is, you tweak the messaging, but the funnel structure is pretty consistent and should be pretty sound no matter what industry you're going after. And then um, then yesterday, we talked about the lead automation, the short form content, how to get people to engage with that content, stop the scroll, actually you know, get those eyeballs. And then once you have those eyeballs, how to direct them to this, uh, I'm not getting, shoot, I'm, it's not letting me, oh, there we go. I was pressing the wrong buttons. Um, and how to get them to this sales funnel right here. All right. Um, yeah, my arrows are working all weird. All good. We'll, we'll figure it out. All right. So today 
we are talking about the follow-up. Um, and so there's, there's kind of a, a term that, you know, I kind of, I, I don't know, I guess it kind of came up with just like, I call it the viral loop. Um, and that's kind of how I, um, talk about this strategy of, of basically what I do and what I've been doing for a number of years now, it's evolved and built upon itself, um, which, you know, hopefully it'll continue to evolve and, and get better. But, um, at this point, I feel like it's a pretty solid, well-oiled machine that, uh, that that's working extremely well that I'll, I'll share with you guys. Right. So here's a look at the viral loop, right? I want everything to compound. You look at investing, they talk about compound interest and the growth of that compounding. I want everything that I do. We talked about leverage. We talked about leveraging time, media, software, and, and everything that I do, every action that I take. Whenever, I, whenever I'm do, working on something in my business, I think, okay, how if, is this going to be an activity that is going to not only benefit me right now, but also benefit me long term? Right. So I don't want to do these one off things that are like, oh, yeah, like it's just it's just for right now, because then that's in the more of like getting paid hourly mindset. Right. Whereas if you're like thinking, OK, I want to work on activities that are going to be valuable right now, but also in a week, a month, a year from now are going to still bring value. Right. And so this is kind of that um, viral loop where yesterday we talked about if you look on the far left, we got like that traffic generation kind of like generating eyeballs. Um, and then we're sending people to the opt-in that we talked about yesterday and the opt-in, then they see the offer. And then today we're going to be talking about the follow-up and then even more content, more different types of content that we could do that then circulates everything back through to getting more traffic into the opt-in on eyeballs on the offer and just like this full on wheelhouse, right? So Follow-up kind of 101, something that you guys have probably seen um, is when someone opts in on our initial landing page and, and Paulson, stop me if I'm going like too deep into things too quick because um, I'm just like, let's just hit the ground running. But, <laughs> yeah. um, and, and I know we've covered a lot of kind of like groundwork of like difference of a landing page and website on previous days, but I just want to make sure I'm not going over anyone's head. So um, if you guys have questions, hit us up in the chat. We'll get to all the questions at the very end here. Um, but also Paulson, stop me if you're like, okay, you go like, I know I was going a little fast yesterday on some things and uh, I just get excited, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. And today's the last day for this workshop. So like, we're going to have a bigger Q and a session today, post a ton of your questions as we get closer to the end of the session. And by the way, if you stay through the end, we'll have a special bonus, uh, a special offer that we're providing for the workshop where you can get high level for 50% off. We'll talk about that. Not Don't mean to be salesy in the middle of this, but when it comes to follow-up, Jason, a couple of observations I've, I've found is it's okay to have different sizes of follow-ups. Some people have seven-day follow-ups. They have one-hour follow-ups. I've even met a couple of agencies that have two-year follow-ups. They will follow up with a prospect once a month for two to three years. And then eventually, a year and a half later, uh, when there's a need that you know, interest buyer becomes an active buyer, um, they're usually able to push them over the fence into an offer. Um, what are what are your thoughts on the beginner? Can you address the beginner and the advanced? Like maybe the beginner don't have anything just yet and barely have anything just lifted off and they just got an account. Um, maybe a seven day follow up is where they should start. Yeah. So, and, and I, I don't know what I'm going to say is probably maybe a little bit contradicting to what even so-called advanced marketers would even think and say um, one. So I was, this probably back in 2015, I went to a, an email marketing conference and Ryan Dice, he was one of the speakers there. If you guys been in the email or in the digital marketing space for a while now, you probably heard the name Ryan Dice big time. He, he owned digitalmarketer.com. Yep. Anyway, he's, he's big time marketer. And this is when I was just kind of like getting my feet wet into the whole marketing game. And one thing from the whole conference is like a three-day conference stuck out to me. And he said, prove, then automate. So we get so excited with workflows, marketing automation, all this cool stuff that everyone wants to jump into automating. Everyone wants to jump into two-year follow-up, one-year follow-up. And personally, I, I think that's the wrong way to go about it. Um, even if someone's like an advanced market, oh, I've got a two-year follow-up. And, and that's where 
I'll, I'll show you guys today what, what I do instead of doing some like two year long automated follow up. Because here's the deal too. Um, some of the things that you even maybe let's say you proved it and now you're automating it and you're like, I've got two years worth of proven stuff that is going to work. Well, guess what? All of a sudden AI comes along. All of a sudden Facebook ads don't work as well. All of a sudden the algorithms change and all of these things that you automated for two years, by the time they come up in the follow-up sequence, they're irrelevant, right? And so for me, what I like to do, and I think is even great for beginners as well, I like to stick with a pretty simple seven day follow up. And, 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 that, and that's, and, and here's the thing what I say is not like necessary doctrine or, you know, like you got to take it as like 100% the truth. But, um, and, and some people, you know, they do a three day follow up, seven day, 14 day, 30 day, you know, even some like Paulson was saying a, a year or two. Um, this is just what's worked for me. And this is what works with my, system and machine that I've kind of put together for myself and, and I like it works. And so I, I, I just, I, you know, once again, like to keep things simple because I have in the past gone and built out, you know, a full year follow-up, but then I, I just have run in that situation where like, you know, six months down the road, one of the emails that was a total fire email, like six months ago, oh man, well, that concept's not really working as much anymore, or yeah, that's not really as relevant. And, and then you get into this generic stuff. Whereas the generic stuff's not as relevant and helpful anyway. So you're not really adding a ton of value. So I kind of like to keep it to um, someone initially. Anyway, so, so kind of jump back into this. Um, we, we've got the, the initial kind of follow-up is at least for the first few days, you, you should be following up with somebody, right? Um, and I, I've, I talked about this on, I had a coaching call with, with my community um, like a week or two, or no, it was probably like a month after the uh, high level summit. And at the high level summit, everyone, I, I don't know how, how many of you guys were at the high level summit. I'm just curious to see. Um, but at the high level summit, they've got all these booths outside of the, the conference area and everyone's kind of selling their widget or whatever. And um, I just happen to be hit up a lot because they know I'm a big affiliate for high level and what they're promoting is kind of like, you know, it correlates with high level. So everyone wants to go through and say, hey, promote my stuff too. And the funny thing is there was two companies actually there that I actually thought were pretty legit. And I was like, I would, I'd be actually interested in learning a little bit more about these. And obviously you can only get so, so, many, uh, so many details there live at the conference because there's a lot going on. And the funny thing is, is I have not heard, and, and like we, we kind of like, you know, we, we chatted, got contact and exchanged contact information. And I still have not heard from either one of them. And I'm just kind of thinking like, we're sitting here two months later and I'm not saying I'm like the only person to go through and promote, but I'm like kind of shocked. I'm like, that's strange that if they were like so much like wanting to talk to me at the event, but now two months later, I still haven't heard from them. You know, like that's kind of like, I, I almost want, I want to go reach out to them. I just forget what the company name was, you know, on both of them. So anyway, kind of side tangent story, but that just goes to show like how important the follow-up is because even if you're like, oh man, I, I don't want to be annoying. Well, sometimes it's not like people like don't want to work with you. They might just, they've got a lot of stuff going on. They just forgot what your, the name of your company is. They might've saw something, some little ad or video. I'm like, oh man, that's super cool. Uh, I remember seeing that little page or whatever, but shoot, I don't, I can't find the website URL. I don't know where I'm going. And so that's why like this, this follow-up is so important. So anyway, we talked about the other day, why it's important to have a landing page. On that landing page, we're basically asking for contact info, right? Name, email, and phone. And and obviously there's, there's probably a lot of strategies going into calling people on the phone, texting, all that stuff. I'm going to focus primarily today on email because that is what more of my expertise is. That's more of what I focus on and do. Um, but to go through and add on to this, um, texting obviously is a great resource. Uh, giving them an actual phone call as soon as somebody actually opts in. There's stats showing that if you contact somebody within the first five minutes, your, um, the chances of you actually contacting them go up dramatically as well as the quality of the, the lead, right? So you want to be, that's why we want to be in touch with them instantly. But here, what I'm doing is we've got the landing page and the confirmation page. And notice every single one of these emails over the next seven days, 
I am sending them back to the same exact confirmation page, the same exact offer, the same. I'm just getting it back in front of them, just reminding them, hey, you know, you might have forgot, but it's, and then just kind of like each email, it's got a little bit different subject line, talking about a little bit different thing, but just click, get them click back to this uh, same confirmation page. And, and no matter what, like whatever follow-up you do, that first few days at least, you should be sending back to the same offer, right? Because then if you're like, you get them in on the confirmation page, you, you present one offer and now you're having a follow-up sending them to a different type of offer, they're going to get confused. And like, well, what's the difference? And like, what's going on here? And so that's where we just want to keep it simple. Um, anyway, it, it, that kind of yeah. clarifies some of those things that we're bringing up there, Paulson. Absolutely. So let's let's pause for a quick second. How many of you today have a, any kind of follow up for your business? Like, I would love to see in the comments. Give me give me a timeline. Give me maybe number of steps. Like maybe you have a three month follow up. Maybe you have uh, a one week follow up. Now I'm seeing some of the comments come in. But now I I agree with Jason, and this is some of the themes that we talked about in a couple of the other uh, workshops as well. Is when it comes to follow-ups, there's only really two big pillars that you want to pay attention to. And if you guys are taking notes, this is something that you want to definitely jot down, which is relevancy and timing. Okay? Those are the only two things that matter in the follow-up. So relevancy of when the messages go out. I mean, uh, the messaging relevancy of what exactly you're speaking to and what's related to them and the timing of when it goes out, right? So there is cadences there that you want to test out and go further into it. And I'm sure Jason will kind of elaborate more on it as we go. So Jason, you have the seven follow-up steps. And what you're telling me is six of those steps are pushing the traffic back to the original step to make sure that original step is being converted. Is that what I'm understanding on the conversion page? A hundred percent of them, all, all, <laughs> all seven days I'm pushing back. And here's the deal too. You want to make sure, and the, the, the beauty about high level is with workflows. So workflows, if you guys are new to high level, it's kind of like their marketing automation where you can follow up with leads, send out emails and texts and automations and kind of like these little drip campaigns. Um, but what you can do too is once somebody comes in and takes um, takes action on your offer, right? Whether it's like book an appointment on your sales rep's calendar they sign up for your software, whatever it's doing, you can tag that person and then remove them from the remainder of the seven day follow-up sequence. So I make sure I do that because yeah, if somebody goes and signs up, takes action, you don't want to keep hounding them and saying, you know, Hey, go sign up, go sign up. And they're like, I already did. Like, this is kind of getting annoying. And it's like, kind of creates a, you know, poor relationship with that person. So, so that's what I do. I send everyone here. But if they do um, opt in, get started, I I make sure I exclude them from that follow up. Awesome. So what happens next? All right. So let's roll with this thing. Okay. What happens after seven days? Great, great question there, Boston. <laughs> um, so this is a quick story, um, and this is kind of when I first learned that this concepts of going through. So like for the longest time, I was getting traffic. I was sending them to a landing page, right? I was making an offer, I was building up my email list, building up my email list. And I would just follow up kind of like that first few days, first seven days I was following up. And after that, I really wasn't doing anything with my email list, right? I had heard about all these people like, yeah, they'll have like these long email lists, all that stuff. And I was like, you know, I'm just focused on getting more leads. And, and so I was just accumulating a, for the, at the time, this is kind of when I was getting started. It was a fairly big email list. I think I had probably about 10,000 um, subscribers on my email, email list. And I went on a road trip with a buddy of mine who actually was, we were going to a mastermind together. He was in the mastermind and he, his focus was email marketing. And so we were just kind of having like a little bit of a, you know, just like a hot seat session where he'd tell me about his business, some things that he was working on, struggling with all that stuff. And then vice versa. And so I was telling him like about my business and luckily I, I feel like a lot of businesses luck. I was sitting with this guy who his expertise was email marketing. So I was telling him like, yeah, I'm doing, you know, like I'm getting people this landing page, building a list, making an offer and it's going really well. And he's just like, well, what, what, what are you doing with that email list after, you know, the, the first initial offer? And I was like, oh, nothing. They're just like sitting in my CRM. And he's like, are you serious? 
And I was like, yeah, it's like, but you know, I, I like to, I have to, like to keep things simple, keep focused. You know, I hear all the time about like having that focus and simplicity of just focusing on one thing, not being distracted by all these other things. And so I don't want to create like a different offer um, to go. I want to just keep making sure this offer is working better. And he's like, okay, that makes sense. And he's like, but what if you just sent out a few emails, re-inviting everyone back to view your initial offer? And I was like, hmm, okay. And that's, I mean, it's worth a shot, right? It's got these, these email list subscribers just sitting there. And so um, we went, we had the two day mastermind event, got back home. I was like, you know what? I got to take action on this as soon as possible. So over the next four days, sent out four emails to my email list. And basically it was based on having them opt in to the same exact opt-in page, even though they're on my list still, um, seeing the same exact offer. They had already been presented, same offer, and brought in 12K in four days, which you know, some, some of you guys depend on where you're at in business. Some of you might look at that and be like, oh, that's not very much, Jason. Some be like, oh man, that's a ton of money. Uh, for me at the time, it was kind of when I was getting my feet wet, just getting started. That was a lot of money for me. I was like, man, that's like 3K a day. That's a, that's a lot of money. And so I was really excited about it because I was like, I stumbled upon this new thing by my friend kind of telling me about this. But the only bummer is um, I couldn't do the same offer every single week right? If I went through and like, was, I would, you know, I was, I was running ads and I was getting, getting leads all, you know, I was doing all this stuff to get new leads coming into my business, presenting this offer, wanted to keep making that offer better. But everyone, if they're on my, my list, I can't just keep spamming them the same exact offer. So I, another concept I learned at the same conference that I talked about with uh, Ryan Dice it was uh, back in like 2015. It was called The Machine. He had an old product. It was all about email marketing. And the concepts, um, one of the concepts was a splinter offer. So if you think about a big block of wood, right? And then you break off like a tiny piece of wood. It's like a little splinter, right? It's a little piece of the whole. And so what I was thinking through, I was like, okay, well, this thing of like, I'm building up this email database and I send out an email. And I present an offer and I'm making a lot of, a lot of money. I, like my core offer was a thousand bucks, right? So I'm like, but I can't do that every single week. But my offer was for real estate agents and I was showing them how to generate leads, buyer leads, seller leads, open house leads, leads from Facebook ads, Instagram ads, YouTube, like all these different platforms. And so that was like all the modules in this thousand dollar program. So I thought, you know what, what if I splinter off one of these modules instead of selling it for a thousand bucks, I just sell it for 47, right? And so I went through and did that and I created this, uh, you guys can see how professional this uh, little video right here looks. <laughs> um, I did, uh, it, which by the way, I think this still, like if you type in seller leads on YouTube, I think this still ranks fairly high, even though it's like, and this is where it's like, Sometimes you just got to jump in and get started, guys. Like, you look at this. This is like, yeah, so amateurish. But it ended up getting you like... Even, you don't I even think, iron your shirt, bro. Like, what's going I know, on? man. I look, I look terrible. <laughs> um, but I got like well over 10,000 views for the longest time. It, uh, it ranked for like seller leads or real estate seller leads or something like that on YouTube. So I got a lot of traction from it. Um, but then I, I use this as kind of like a... Remember how we talked about yesterday the, the or day one, the VSL video sales letter? I would go through, hey, now I've got my seller leads mastery. I'm going to get help you get qualified leads, um, get your name out to more people, copy and paste Facebook ad templates. And you can see I've got the bonuses hidden over there. And I was going through and selling that for 47 bucks, just the digital training, right? And so here was kind of the sales funnel because I also knew about upsells and downsells and all these cool sales funnel techniques. And so I'm like, I don't want to just go and sell a $47 one-time thing because they'll probably be interested in other things, right? And I have up here, you can see the old way because this, this works extremely well, guys, but there's actually a much better way to do it, which I'll show you guys here in a second. So what I would do one weekend is I would be like, okay, I know my audience and I know real estate agents, they want buyer leads, right? So I would go through and I would lead all my emails I would send out would be about buyer leads. You want buyer leads, get buyer leads. And it's 47 bucks. It's like, you know, discounted down from whatever. And so hit buyer leads. And if they bought that, they're probably interested in generating leads, right? 
And so I'd be like, okay, I'm going to upsell them on seller leads. My seller leads, I'd have buyer leads mastery, then seller leads mastery for 47. And then I have unlimited leads, which would like open up another, like even more leads, more ways to get leads. And then after that, I'd be like, all right, now you have all these lead training, go grab my software, right? And so that was one, one weekend. And then the next weekend I would flip flop. You see the first two right there? It just goes oh, from yeah. you buyer leads first <laughs> and then now it's seller leads. And so now like everyone who is more interested in seller leads, they'd be like, oh man, like that's just, I want seller leads. And so I bring them in with that hook. And then once again, I present buyer leads because guess what? That offer, that product is already built. It's already created. So might as well put in front of them again, then unlimited leads for 297 upsell and then get the software, right? And then I go and I, th this is kind of after a couple um, months of doing it. I'm like, well, you know what? People are also Instagram, in interested in Instagram leads. That's another one. Because Instagram, you could get buyer or seller leads, but like that hook of Instagram, they want to build their following on Instagram. So I'd lead with Instagram and then I'd be like, oh, and then Facebook leads, which crazy. I mean, I don't know. You can look down upon this or whatever, but Instagram and Facebook leads, it's literally the same exact concept. But when you're setting up Facebook ads manager, you just check the button whether you want it to show on Instagram, right? Which you guys probably know all of this better than me because as you guys know, I'm, I've been banned from Facebook ads for, for years now, but that's at least how it was back at the time. So I would go lead with, hey, here's how to generate um, leads on Instagram. Here's how to generate leads on Facebook, unlimited leads. And then I'd flip flop it the next week, Facebook leads. So you see how I'm doing this? Like I would just basically change the hook, the offer. I wasn't creating a whole new offer. I wasn't creating a whole new product because that takes a lot of time to create new offers and new products that are actually good that you can fulfill and deliver um, in a way that people are actually going to get results. And so I was doing this for the longest time because I would bring in new leads. Their, the first entry point was I was selling my $1,000 ticket item, which was kind of bundled in with the software, get them templates, all this leads, train all this stuff. And then if people weren't ready to buy a $1,000 ticket item from me because they never heard of me, I would have these follow-ups every single weekend of like, hey, well, just like, you know, just try this little sample out, this little splinter offer here and bring in, you know, 10K nearly every single weekend when I was doing this. Um, but then the only problem is, can anyone, can anyone think what the problem might be here? <laughs> you're, in the, having in the chat. To fulfill, you're having to fulfill like 50 different types of offers, uh, different timing as well, right? Not not necessarily because it's a digital course, right? So for oh, forty seven bucks, oh okay, it's, it's a, a course. This is a digital course for forty seven bucks. So fulfillment is basically next to nothing. Um, wow. So any any guesses in the Facebook comments what the problem is with this model? I'm bringing in ten k every single weekend, but there's still an issue with this. They never buy your higher offer. People are saying they're very similar. They run out of splinter leads. Um, I remember the machine. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, let me look at, let me see more comments guys and gals. Uh, cause there's one, there's one core problem. It's not that I'm, they're not buying my high ticket offer. I don't care about that. Honestly, I don't even care if they pay the one K like one K is not going to be make any, anyone rich, right? There's one core thing. And it's the reason we're all on this training right now. It's the reason you all build your, your companies on high level. It is the reason that high level is an actual valuable company. It's, it's the reason why Netflix is a valuable company. And so what is that one reason, guys? It's the subscription. Nobody's the subscription. Nailed it, right? So anyway, I, I, I should have switched to the slide already. So what's the one goal of every software company? It's to build your monthly recurring revenue. So what I saw happen is... People would be buying these $47 one-time digital products, but how many of you guys buy a $47 digital product and never even log in? I buy $500 or $1,000 products sometimes at this point, <laughs> and I don't even log in. I just paid $8K like two weeks ago for this uh, coaching program, and I still haven't logged in to the members area, right? So like, that is the biggest thing. And, and my idea was they're buying this buyer leads digital training, buying this seller leads, Facebook, Instagram leads, whatever it is. And then inside of the training, I would have links to, okay, here's how you do it. And here's the software to automate and simplify everything. So theoretically, 
it works, right? Theoretically, you're going to have everyone go and sign up. You're going to be a billionaire. It's going to be awesome. Um, but in reality, you know, theoretic, theor theoretically in reality are always completely different. Um, most people that bought, yeah, I, I got that little quick cash grab, but they weren't going through the course. So they weren't signing up for the software. And so I was not getting the monthly recurring revenue, AKA the predictability and the consistency that I wanted in my business. Right. And so here is the new way the, 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 even this it's a simpler funnel makes a whole lot more money and it's way better for you, for me, for everyone. And that is basically in order to get you, you still lead with the buyer leads angle, seller leads, or whatever your industry is. It doesn't matter. It, they've got all these different hooks of what your avatar is interested in. But in order to get this, got to grab the software, right? Sign up for the software and you'll get this. And so now there's no like, yes, it's maybe a little bit less money up front week one on bringing in 10K every single, every single weekend. But I'm building a monthly recurring subscriber. And if someone's willing to go through and put money down for my software, I'm a lot more willing to invest into them and getting a support rep or an account rep to jump on a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call and actually set their account up, right? If someone's just doing a little low ticket $47 one time, I'm not doing any one-on-one -on -one for that. It's not worth it to me, right? It just It's, it's going to be like pulling hair and uh, it, you just don't want to do that. So you go through and you say, get the software and you'll get my course or my templates or my coaching or whatever as a bonus, okay? So here it was where we went and changed this up. It was like, hey, get the buyer leads if you get the software. Get my seller lead training if you get the software. Get my Facebook leads if you get the software. And we actually, Paulson, I know was talking about um, challenges the other day. And we actually kind of even condensed this in. And for those of you guys who've been following me for some time or in my real estate program, you guys know this. Uh, but we condensed this into a 30-day lead challenge. And the big hook was get 15 exclusive leads in the next 30 days, right? And there's a 30-day lead challenge. And um, what we would do is we would sell, we would give them uh, for, for $199, we would give them 30 days free to the software, right? But, and then we would do um, all the templates, bonuses, leads training, a done for you initial setup, which was like a huge like pushover to get a ton of sales. And uh, guess what? When they signed up for that 30 day lead challenge, they were, they were aware of it when we weren't like trying to hide or anything, but it was hey, you get 30 days free to the software, but it's also a way to kind of like disguise, like not even sign up for a trial. They were paying out of the gate. And then after the 30 days, they were just rolling into a monthly software subscription. And because they weren't signing up for a trial and they were paying us money right away, like I was just saying, we were more invested in them to be able to put an account rep and actually do the done for you setup because we're like, hey, we're fine even losing all $200 right out of the gate. Because we know if we set them up, they will actually, one, get set up, right? Because if uh, if you leave it up to them to set up their whole software account, more than likely they're not doing anything, right? Just like the digital courses. And then two, you leave it up to them to to know how to set things up the right way. Even, even if they follow everything, even if you give them templates, make it as simple as possible, people will mess things up, right? <laughs> and so then what we would do is have someone set it up and then um, we knew that they, one, they were getting set up and two, they were going to be set up the right way. So three, they were going to get the desired end result or the promise of the 15 exclusive leads in the next 30 days. And so they would be happy with our solution and want to stay on long term. And that simple sales funnel right there by simply tweaking that and how we structured that and having them sign up for the software directly ended up being the best uh, sales funnel for lifetime value of, of our customers. Not even like I thought initially, cause we were selling like a thousand dollar ticket item, like a little higher ticket, uh, mid, mid tier ticket. And that's not that high ticket. And I thought like, Oh, if someone's paying a thousand dollars, they're going to be more invested. They're going to be better clients. They're going to be better people overall. And guess what? It actually wasn't the case. It was these, these $200 30 day lead challenge, jumping in, sign up for the software with kind of these different angles that, that absolutely crushed it. Right. And so let me, I'm let, me doing this. Some, let me add some notes here before we move forward. Yeah, go for it. Um, so uh, like 
I don't mean to get on this rant or soapbox, but I truly believe this in my heart. <clears throat> the agency game sucks. I built three agencies, one to almost 800 plus clients. One was niche down. One was custom. And it's very difficult because you are essentially, you know, the boss that you have in your life are the clients because they pay the money. So 9 p.m., 10 p.m., when you got to spend time with your family and they call, you better freaking pick up. That's the reality of the agency game. The other side of agency game that nobody talks about is the churn. And we know from data at high level that if you have marketing services as an agency, there's like 72 to 76% churn rate within the first 90 days whether you provide white glove, amazing promise delivered results or not. Because marketing people, guess what? Believe it or not, we're on the chopping block. They're not going to fire their front desk lady that they have for $2,000. They're going to fire the outside third party that's a vendor that's so-called bringing in leads as the first option to save money. So we're always on the chopping block. Now, why does this conversation matter to you? Because... The rise of SaaSpreneurs that happened, I think, in 2021, uh, late 2020, where a ton and ton of agencies inside high level started selling features inside at high level and collected subscriptions. So instead of selling $1,500 for Facebook ads, they would take one or two or three or four or five of the features inside high level and go out to the market and sell it for $100. And we saw a couple of agencies where it was recurring and they were doing like three, we saw some agencies that were doing three, 4,000 clients a month. And we were like, what in the world is happening over there? Why are those agencies just like ultra dominating the market? Uh, and it was confusing. But when we looked into it, what we saw was, their packaging was technology-based. So if you look at like the IT industry over the years, I'm going to date myself here. Back in the day, when you get Windows 95 or 98, you had to get a CD. It'll come in the mail. You bought this yellow CD and you have this Compact Presario or IBM and you got to call your nephew and cousin and whoever to come install these things for like five, six hours. They put in all these codes. They look up all these little DOS docs and it's like a big process. That person and cost a lot of money. And that's the managed service provider. That The IT world already knows that. That wave of MSPs already happened in that space. You look at guys like my Cooch, Jason, a um, ton of people that talk about it. Now, in the marketing world, this is the first wave of that. You can take high level, take splinter offers like Jason is talking about from a feature, create your own subscription model as a business. And we're now seeing agencies who built a platform or a software book of business starting to exit for five, six million dollars. Uh, and now it's been like a year and a half of that, you know, the, the rise of entrepreneurs, as I call it. So this whole software thing, it's, it's a really big deal. Even a car manufacturer today wants to charge you nine dollars for heated seats per month even though it's already been <laughs> delivered. Netflix wants to charge you $9 a month. Uh, I mean, I flew on United yesterday, got the freaking, you know, you had to pay monthly to get in like a, a drink and a card and food, and you had to house your card inside the app permanently for you to be able to use, it. like you can't even use it. So every single person, a, a company out there, is trying to figure out how do how do they get to subscription? How do they get to subscription? Um, and I just wanted to just make that point because those of you that are watching here, I see you know seven eight hundred people watching. A good amount of you don't understand the hype behind high level. It's not a CRM. I promise you, it's not a CRM. It's more of an operating system. We just disguise it in CRM language because that's what the market knows it as. But our goal is to become the first ever operating system the marketing world has ever seen. Now, let me get off my soapbox here, Jason, because I think every agency should adopt a software offer for these reasons. Now, it looks like you did that, right? You went from buyer leads, courses, services, and housed everybody into software. And you made a really good point of 
Nobody's going to transition into the software easily unless you handhold them. Can you talk about that onboarding process or maybe add any notes to what I just said? Uh, I feel like um, I'm getting passionate here. So let me stop. <laughs> yeah, man. No, you're good. No, I, and, and, and here's the thing is um, we were, we were a SaaS business first. Um, we actually, we yeah, said 15, no to a right? We, yeah, we said no to most, if not all, um, full service people. Uh, I think we, at our peak, this is not impressive at all, but I'll, I'll share them. At our peak, I think we had 15 full service clients. And the only reason why we had 15 is because they didn't ask once, they didn't ask twice, they asked five. It was like 10 times banging down our door. And I was like, fine, we'll do something for you. Right. Like, cause we were, I was like, I knew, I knew I would, here's the deal. I knew I was missing out on a lot of money. There was a lot of money on the table to do done for you full service, especially at the scale we were at. I just didn't want like, you know, the Stephen R. Covey begin with the end of mine. I have a very specific vision of what I want to build of for my life and my, you know, just my family, my everything, you know, and it was not building a massive team in an office with hundreds of people doing done for you client work. And so even with all of our clients, with all of our scale, the max number of people on our team was only 15, right? So it's not, honestly, it's not that big of a team for the scale that we got to, but it was because we focused on software. And, and one other thing I'll say, Paulson, I know we're getting a little bit off on a tangent here, but the beauty I love about software, especially for beginners, and if anyone's on here, just got started with high level, or even you're like, you're looking at this opportunity, you're like thinking, hmm, should I jump in? I don't know if I've got the marketing experience, the tech skills, this and that. The beautiful thing about software is it removes you from the equation, right? If you're going to go do um, SEO or search engine optimization for clients, if you're going to run Facebook ads for clients, you have to have some skills. You have to know how to set things up. You don't have to, you have to know how to do backlinks. You have to know things with software. It's kind of point and click a few th times and the software does the heavy lifting for you. So that's why I love software. And that's where like, I try to preach this to my community of like, look, you're a total beginner. You have no marketing experience, no tech skills. The, the, like those aren't like sa just sales pitches or words for me to say to people. It's true. I like, I firmly believe it where it's like, Hey, you don't have any skills. Great. Go set somebody up with miscalled text back, connect their Google business profile. Just have them sign into high level and check the button that says miscalled text back. And I can guarantee you, even if you have no marketing experience, no tech skills, nothing, you can do that. And guess what? It doesn't rely on any of your skill sets because the software does all the heavy lifting for you. And then on a monthly ongoing basis, it still delivers value to your client without you needing to be involved. And so, yeah, kind of pulsing what you're saying. That's the beauty of high level is, is really, you know, if, if it was just another agency software to go and build an agency on it and all that stuff, it's like, well, well great. That's cool. Um, but it would not grow to the point that it's grown. And that was when I was looking at what my next thing that I wanted to do was that was what hooked and sold me on high level was, oh, people can white label this and run it as their own software platform. Cause that was my background. I knew the power of software and I loved it in the month of current revenue. Um, you're able to charge lower price points because you're not so involved time intensively on a day to day. And so these are lower price points that guess what? These small local business owners can actually afford, right? They can't, not all of these can, can afford 15 to two, $2,000 per month plus ad spend, even though for the gurus, it's pretty easy to make a little YouTube video of like, Hey, here's how to make 10 K per month. Just get five clients paying you two grand a month. And then you're thinking like, Oh man, that seems so simple. I'm going to do it. But then the churn comes in and you get hosts. Whereas you look at like the big time platforms like Podium, Weave, like all these other softwares, they're not doing that. They're charging two, three, four, five hundred dollars per month. Something they can actually afford and they can actually scale their business with. Yeah. Right. And, so and, and what's crazy is you keep hundred percent of the revenue you make. It doesn't yep. matter for us at high level whether you do SaaS or not. Because we'll make the same money w whether you make money or not in a selfish way to think about it. But we want you to succeed because we're agency owners of the past. 
we're not just a bunch of software guys. We all had agencies and we understand the difficulty in building agencies. So you keep 100% of the revenue, your fee to high level doesn't change whether you do millions of dollars, everything is unlimited inside high level. And we're seeing now exits, now seeing multi-million dollar high level book of businesses, high level white label brands that are built on high level. And the acquisition folks know it's built on high level. They don't really care. They're buying the book of business and the entry to the market that those initial folks attacked already. So so anyways, let's get back to yeah, we'll get back into the <laughs> we're, we're we're going far now. So so it's my fault, but I think it's worth the point, especially when there's a ton of people here that don't have high level and they don't understand really the hype behind high level. I just wanted to just clarify a couple of things because you came from the SaaS world. You're an original SaaSpreneur that really focus on affiliate marketing now, but you stay on the same point of the power of, you know, software. And that's what I love. Yep, exactly. So anyway, so this is kind of what we just finished off at. But then uh, check this out, guys. I'm doing the affiliate route. It's literally the same process, same model. So I go through and I have that initial opt-in funnel like I've shown you guys, but now I'm hitting different angles. Hey, you know, and, and a lot of my crowd is, even though we talked about don't go broad, go get very niche and specific, but like some of the little broad, I'm like hitting like the passive income side of things. Hey, you want to make five, 10K per month in semi-passive income? And that's where I say semi-passive because it actually, there is some work, right? Um, and then I've got the middle one. I've got the agency angle. I've got the software angle. And I've got a number of angles. I've got the real estate marketing agency angle. I've got the affiliate angle. I've got, um, what else do I've got? Um, side hustle. Uh, I've got, I've got them listed all up here, but, um, I've got all these different angles, which ev then every single week I can hit with a different angle that might speak to someone differently that is on my email list that I am building. Right. And obviously, I, I'm, I'm removing anyone that's already signed up, that's already a customer, because they don't need to go through and see this and all these different things because they're already on it, right? Um, and that's where like the, the tagging and the marketing automation with high level is really important. All right. So the best way to promote, um, it's a great question because I don't know what the next slide is, but we'll see here all together. Um, <laughs> all right. So, okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm remembering now. Okay, so we want to create urgency, guys. So um, if you guys have ever read any books about sales, offers, any of this stuff, they always talk about urgency and scarcity, right? Um, so like scarcity, limiting the number of, of, of you know items sold or urgency is like, you've got to get, get in right now or you're going to miss out on all these bonuses. And the crazy thing is, is they talk about this because it's just true. Like no one takes action until you have to take action until you are actually missing out on something right like you, you look at all these black friday deals and cyber monday deals and all these different things people like the biggest sales come in when something is about to close right so that's something to keep in mind here um and and i'm you know i promote high level and, and always on the biggest spike in my numbers is always on that last day that something's closed them, right? Yeah. Um, and so here's kind of how I introduce these different offers um, that we're talking about here to then get people on the software is on Fridays. And, and, and remember guys, like I like to send, we, we talked about this the last two days, is I like to send a daily email to my audience. And by having this structure, it makes sending a daily email so much easier, right? And so it's not like, Oh, Friday, what am I going to, what random thing am I going to send to somebody? Like you need a reason why you're sending an email. If you're just sending an email to send an email, you're, you're, you're going to get so many unsubscribes. People aren't going to want to do business with you. So like the beauty thing, a beautiful thing about like everything that I'm showing you guys is it gives you a specific reason to email your list every single week, every single day and, uh, and, and create that connection with them. And so on Fridays, I introduce the offer. Hey, you know, like we're, we're giving away our buyer leads training when you get started with the software. I uh, just want to let you know, but so, something to that degree, right? And then on Saturday, I'll usually do like a reminder email and, or, or a lot of times I'll do like a testimonial email, right? Like, Hey, you want buyer leads? See how, you know, Susan got all these buyer leads or whoever it is. And so then I go through and talk about her story and how she went through use her software to go and get all these buyer leads. And then on Sunday, um, is and, and this Monday one is kind of optional of like a last call, but uh, the Sunday one, the last day 
I usually like to send three, if not four emails. And I know a lot of people might look at that and be like, Jason, that's so overkill. I don't want to burn out my list and all that stuff. But trust me, the more you email your list, the more money you actually make. And so if you want to, if you want to see this like actually work really well, um, it, it works really well. So, so I would send like first thing in the morning, like let's say an eight, nine a.m. an email, like, hey, this is like this is closing today. And then like midday, like let's say noon, like just just to let you know this is your last chance. And then like kind of two more like last call, this is closing, you know, those types of emails. And you're gonna see your open rates are gonna be way higher than any other open rates you have. The click-through rates on the email are gonna be way higher than any other click-through rates because people don't want to miss out. And if they got this special bonus that you can get just today, this weekend. And the cool thing is, is when we're doing different splinters where it's this weekend, it's buyer leads. And this buyer leads promo might not come around for another two, three months because we have all these different hooks of the next weekend might be seller leads or Facebook leads or Instagram leads or open house leads. And obviously this is specific to real estate, but it can be, you know, dealt with, with whatever um, industry you're going after. And then you can either close it Sunday night at midnight or Monday, you know, let's say midday. And cause like sometimes people Sunday are, you know, with their family, they're not focused on work. So I'm not checking email. And so a lot of times I'll close down Monday midday and just like Monday morning at like 9 a.m. I'll just do a last call. Hey, this last call where, um, you know, if you want, want to get this jump in. Right. And so that's kind of how I go through and promote these little splinter offers. Um, and the only problem here is I don't want to be a pushy salesman. And uh, <laughs> even though that sounds like, you're like, well, Jason, you just sent four spam emails to your list about <laughs> buying something. You're a pushy salesman. Uh, okay. I guess I didn't want to be only a pushy salesman. I also wanted to provide some value. And so this is how I started my YouTube channel, right? And um, what I talked about day one was I said, hey, this blueprint, I'm going to show you guys the next three days. It's going to help you grow your email list, which we've talked about that. We've kind of gone through a lot of things day one and day two on that. It'll help you grow your Facebook group, Instagram following, YouTube following, TikTok, and ultimately your SaaS agency's revenues, which we kind of talked about number one and the last one there. But here's how you can grow a Facebook group, Instagram following, YouTube following, or TikTok, whatever platform you want to have another resource to bring people in. I chose YouTube because I just, I don't mind making YouTube videos. Whereas I talked about this the other day, I hate writing blog posts. It sounds like the worst. And um, I've done a little bit of the podcast thing, but um, wasn't super my thing. So um, anyway, this is how I started my YouTube channel. What I would do is I was building up this email list. And remember, I wasn't sending anything to anybody. And then I did this little weekend promo. And I was like, oh, man, that worked really well. Well, I should probably get these people on my email list ingrained into my life, my world in some other ways. And so at the time... I didn't know YouTube super well. And so I was doing a new video every single day because I thought it was just like mass qual quantity that these get tons of videos out there. And then I kind of pushed back and I was doing like three videos a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and then two videos a week. And now I'm just like, I just keep it simple, consistent, something that I can like stick to. And that's one video a week, right? Um, and that's all you really need. And so what I do is I, I shoot to have one weekly value video where I'm showing something, right? And, and here's where a lot of people get scared. They're like, well, I can't show everything because then they won't buy my thing. Well, guess what? I show everything, literally everything. You guys go watch my YouTube videos and there's some things where I'm like, well, this is stupid. I probably shouldn't show this, but whatever. I need some content. <laughs> so I'll just go and I'll show everything. And the thing is back in the real estate days, I was able to gain a following because, hey, the real estate, uh, like the seller leads, you want to go through and generate seller leads? Oh, and you didn't buy this promo? Let me show you everything behind the scenes of how to go through and get seller leads. I'm going to show you the ad templates. I'm going to show you, I'll, I'll give you basically the whole training in the video of how to go through and do that and also show you how to automate it with my software. So now what, what did that do? It, it got them a desire like, whoa, that, there's a lot of value in this video. Okay, like you're building some good rapport, you're nurturing that person, and then they're seeing the software in action. They're like, whoa, that software actually is pretty cool. Maybe I do need that software. Maybe that would be helpful for my business. And so now I'm going through, um, pushing a new weekly value video to my, my, my list. So I'm not just being a pushy salesman. 
I'm emailing the list, my email list. So I push engagement, right? Cause how many of you guys ever post a YouTube video or anything on social media? You have no following. So you get no views, no comments, no nothing. And so you're like, ah, oh, this, I don't know. This social media game isn't for me. Well, to force the virality of this stuff, you just send it to your email list that you're building up. And maybe it's only like, you know, dozens of people at first and hundreds of people, then thousands of people. And then soon, like you're getting like a thousand plus views just from your email list, right? It doesn't even matter how big your following is. And then you get some organic growth to fuel the viral loop. So here's kind of, um, and I'm going to show you guys a little bit more details of how I go through and do this, but um, this is kind of that viral loop. And we've got that content section right before the traffic. And remember, we're still doing a daily short form piece of content, right? <laughs> but on the, but we, we talked about, um, we talked about how to simplify this, right? We talked about, so like the, this daily short form piece of content should actually not be hard. Like you should a week, knock that all out, get it going. And then one time a week, having a more in-depth, because a short form piece of content, you can hook somebody, you can get them interested, intrigue them, but you're not offering real value, right? So you direct them to your email list. And then where the real value comes in is this longer form content. It could be any content, a blog, podcast, YouTube video. It could be a Facebook group. I talk about, you know, building your Facebook group and having maybe live trainings in there every single week, a live workshop, you bring on it like a co-host or something like that. And so now you start to build these secondary audiences outside of your email list. And so now let's say you've got something that you want to promote. You send an email out. Well, now you've just built a, a Facebook group to a thousand people or 10,000 people. You can post in there about it, or you just built a YouTube following to a thousand or 10,000 people. You post on YouTube about it. Right. And so now you have these secondary backup um, audiences that you can go through and push more content or more people to and deepen the relationship and add more value. Right. And, and what I love about this concept here the most, Jason, is it's cumulative engagement. Right. So, yep. As soon as you get in front of them, you're essentially going to forever keep them in your world some way, somehow. Whether they jump into an offer or not, it doesn't really matter. So, the guy and gal that engaged with you back in August could anytime just jump into an offer because now, like, it's crazy. I, I remember people telling me, dude, I watched your stuff for like two years before I bought your first $100 thing. Then I bought your $5,000 thing. This is back when I had my own agency and a few masterminds and blah, blah, blah stuff before high level. But it, for, for some reason, people just will wait and wait until they're like, you know what? This, this is the right thing for me. And they'll just go all in all at once. And then you're like, how did the popcorn just pop? It just ridiculously all in one weekend. And it's in the reality is there's a sales cycle that's in play. And similarly, there is a content cycle that's in play. And there's a cumulative measuring stick that you got to pay attention to. So, you know, understand where people are coming from, how you're following up with them, and for what reason. And if mm -hmm. you can figure those three pillars out for your business, it's really hard to fail if your offer is actually relevant. Exactly, exactly. And and uh, kind of tell you guys, the reason why I started my YouTube channel, I started back in January of 2018. And I remember somebody, I was in a mastermind and towards the end of 2017, I was telling some about my business. It was very heavily focused on Facebook ads at the time. Facebook ads, the landing page, you know, and then presenting an offer. And somebody said, uh, what happens if like your Facebook account, Facebook ads account gets banned? And this is before anyone's ad accounts were getting this banned. Before you got banned. <laughs> Way before. This is three years before. And uh and, and it well, there was there was a time and for people that have been in this um industry for a while, there was a time it, they've gotten a little bit more relaxed from what I hear from uh media yeah. buyers now than they've been the last two, three years. But there was like a season where they were just banning accounts left yeah. and right for, for no reason. It was mostly bots and machines doing it, but they were just banning left and right. And so I remember someone brought this up to me at a mastermind and I was like, hmm, interesting thought. But I was like, I'm not getting banned. I've never had any issues with Facebook. Like, why would I have any issues with Facebook? Why would I ever, you know, why did I have to worry? And then it kind of just started weighing on me a little bit more. And I was like, you know, <laughs> it would be nice to have. Because also a big part of my traffic was just like, I pay, you know, Facebook money and I get leads. 
And I was like, you know what? It'd probably be nice to have some type of organic lead generation. That sounds pretty cool. Not have to pay for leads. And so I was like, one, I want some diversification with my lead generation. Um, so if something did happen with Facebook, I wouldn't have to, you know, um, basically have my business die. And then two, I was like, organic lead generation sounds awesome. And then three, I actually had some experience with a dental YouTube channel back in like 2012, 2013. And I remember like some of those videos, like I wasn't the one making them. I was, it was just like little slideshow ones, but someone would get like, one had like over half a million views or something like that. And I remember the organic lead gen that it brought in. I was like, that's pretty cool. And like, even years after the fact of making it, you still get thousands of views, you could still be pulling in um, a lot of eyeballs. It's not, and then like someone could type in search and be able to get all that, like be able to have your video pop up. I thought that was so cool, right? And so that's why, I kind of started pushing um, towards YouTube, be able to have like the search results. And also I wasn't going to go write blogs and do blog posts or anything like that. So now we do a Tuesday value video to my new uh, video that I just released, sharing as much as possible. And like I was just was saying, guys, it would then start to get me organic traffic, like right there, this video, how to start a digital marketing agency. You know, I started ranking and I don't know if this one still ranks or not, but you know, I started getting um, ranked up at the top on certain videos. I told you guys about the seller leads video. It started ranking at the top. And so I would get all this free organic exposure, which then would boost visibility uh, for my business, my brand, and my leads. And I would get leads without having to pay money. And it was that compounding effect, right? We talk about compound interest, compound effect. Like the more videos you post, the more like little, I think of it like little soldiers in an army that are out there fighting for you, going like and, and doing stuff. But you film the video once, you post it, and it works long term, um, where it's continually bringing in new people for you. And the way I leverage this is um, in the description, as well as in the top comment that I have pinned, I have, let's see, it's on this next slide. Uh, it's not, but I have, this is the link to that initial landing page that we showed you earlier, right? And so now it comes full circle where it's like they opt in, let's say from a YouTube short to the landing page, see the offer, have the seven day follow-up. And then on Tuesdays, I'm shooting out this email to go through and add some more value. And if they go watch this video and maybe it's, it was this video that made them like, okay, I actually trust this person. They actually know what they're talking about. This is actually good content. Now I'm going to finally opt in and actually go through um, the, the the whole funnel and actually buy whatever the offer is. It's just another um, more eyeballs. And then even if somebody's typing in, you know, the specific keyword, your video pops up. This is another way to bring in eyeballs and leads into your offer, right? I love, so you know, one thing I'm observing here is you, you need to have. Well, there's two things. First thing is the diversification, right? The you you must have different channels, different offers. Even the idea of like the book one thing, and you know, I'm, I'm a, I was a huge fan of guys like you know Sam Ovens, and I know Jason, you might be as well. Where you just lay, you stay on this one narrow focus on everything. But the danger of that kind of a thinking is you lose sight of everything else around you because you're so indoctrinated into that one thing. Um, so it's important that you diversify channels, diversify offers, diversify fulfillments, even like internal employees and team members, you must have two, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, the type of clients and niches, you must have two in the in the grand scheme of things, instead of just one specific industry. In the beginning, when you're starting off, sure, like there's one lane. But eventually, when you scale, you must have multiple diversification. And when it comes to content, the same thing applies, right? Every single thing you send out cannot be so salesy. So internally, we have like the 60-40 rule. 60% of our content out there should be beneficiary. Like it should be a beneficial educational recommendations, success stories. It shouldn't have any offers attached to it. The other 40% should have a direct relevant offer attached to it. And if you balance your communication to the market out that way, usually you have good cadence, right? Otherwise, if you go extreme on one or the other, let's say all education, then no one can really buy anything. They just come to engage with you and you're not really moving the needle on building your business, which is no offers are being presented every single day, which is the golden rule of business. 
the opposite side where everything is salesy, 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 where there's no value being presented. Uh, it also feels like eh, it's kind of scamish. He's just focused on selling, selling, selling. So you need to find a balance in that diversification. I think that's a really big piece in uh, you did it for safety, right? You did it. You know what? I got to have if Facebook goes down and Zuckerberg is pissed off that Monday, I better have YouTube on, which in the grand scheme of things, that's the way all business should function. Um, but any notes you want to add to that? No. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, uh, it's great. This is good to have some, uh, diversity like it, but, but like kind of going back to what you said when you're starting and I know there's a lot of beginners on here who are looking to get started. Yeah. You got, you got to have the focus. You got to have just focus on, on one traffic source, one traffic channel, one offer, one, like just one, everything, because it, it's hard enough to make one thing work that don't like, I, here's the deal. I didn't even start YouTube until I think it was two years into my systems being like well-oiled machines and they were working super well. And I had the extra time. I had the extra time to go through and do this because I knew, all right, well, I'm just going to keep, you know, pumping ads. I'm going to keep doing like the, the format I was doing. And then I'm like, I, well, I've got extra time. I'll make some YouTube videos. And so then that's where like, it kind of um, went from there. Right. So it's, it's really important to focus at first. And then once you get something working because you had that focus, then it's good to go and diversify and branch out a little bit. Love it. So what's hap what happens after Tuesday value videos? So that you have Friday, Saturday, Sunday, yeah. Now you have Tuesdays. I'm thinking something happens Wednesday or Thursday. <laughs> yeah. So we got, um, and we'll, we'll hit the, the day by day week here in a second, but, um, so Wednesday we'll, we'll skip for right now, but then Thursdays, what, what I'd like to do. And, and here's the deal guys. These are, these are my best practices. Um, and I always am honest with my group. I'm like, guys, I sometimes I get lazy and I don't always do my best practices. So, um, but when I am actually doing my best practices, the numbers show the numbers show that these things work. And so that's why I'm sharing them with you guys. Um, but if you're like following me, like, well, Jason, you didn't post a YouTube video on Tuesday. It's true. I didn't. Um, and I have one actually <laughs> scheduled for, and the reason why I didn't, I'll, I'll share with you guys why I didn't is because the reason also another reason why I post YouTube videos is for a reason to email my list, which this last Tuesday, if you guys were on day one, I had a reason to email my list already. It was a three day workshop, right? which is also adding value. And so I was like, well, I'm going to actually push that Tuesday video to next Tuesday because next week I don't have a three-day live workshop I'm doing. So that'll be a reason to email the following week, right? Um, anyway, so back to this. The um, one Another thing that is really helpful is these uh, case study or testimonial emails. And if you're just starting out, you might be like, oh, Jason, I don't have testimonials. I don't have case studies. It's, it's fine, right? Just once you get them, you, you start doing this, right? And I've got like a page right here of testimonials, but that's not that's not the angle. So we'll talk about, let me see if I got this. No, I don't. Um, okay, so what I do is each Thursday, I'll send a testimonial email talking about so-and-so and how they went through and they got like, I'll talk about the result that they got, which is um, similar to the desired end result that my audience wants, whether it's more, buyer leads, seller leads, more booked appointments, more closed deals, whatever it is. And then I'll kind of like highlight them, right? Just like, here's this person. This is what they were doing before. This is what they then implemented. They implemented this uh, program with our software. We're able to get this end result and they were able to close a deal and you know make some money or whatever it might be, right? And so then say like, and then I would have a call to action of like, Hey, you know, if you want to go through and get started with the same blueprint that so-and-so did jump in and get started with the software. And we'll actually hook you up with the complimentary, uh, done for you setup, right? Cause we've talked a lot about done for you setups are, are massively valuable to, um, having that long-term lifetime value. And so that's what we would do. But then if you think about it, so week one, the first time you do this, it's like, okay, cool. Like, that person had some success and uh, you might get a few people signing up, but then what happens if you do it again the next week and More. the next week More. and the next week? And then people are looking at this like, holy crap, like everyone that is working with Jason, it seems like is just getting massive results. They're succeeding. I haven't jumped in. I haven't gotten started. So every step along the way, every single week, they're hearing a new case study, a new result, a new awesome story. 
And they're like, it's kind of the FOMO, right? They, they want to be a part of it. And so then it's just, it's another reason to email. It's, it's in my personal opinion, it is a value-based email because it's sharing successes and not your success of how much you're making in your business. Nobody cares about that. It's sharing a success of one of your clients about how they went through and used your software, your systems or whatever you got going on, had success and Hey, we can help you out. We'd love to help you out as well. Right. Yeah. Um, and, and, so, and remember guys, like what we're talking about today is the cadence of follow-up. The first day we talked about the style of the offer, things like that. Yesterday, we talked about a ton of different things in how to build up the capture, essentially fielding that traffic. And today, the whole theme is around the follow-up. And what Jason's sharing right now is the weekly cadence of how he kind of themed the market messaging, right? And how he stayed in front of the prospects. And you see this as a common practice. Like I, I know... Um, you know, a lot of you don't want to put your personal brand out there and put your face and name and all these things, which is totally fine. If you can go down the route of creating content that's relevant to your prospect, you will still win, right? So if you're going after dentists, you can say, here are the number, the five things dentists talk about on Invisalign and just talk about clinical stuff. It's okay. Just stay in front of the prospect that shows and demonstrates that you're relevant to that industry. Um, let's keep going. Let's do it. All right. So here is, um, like Paulson was saying, this is the weekly cadence of what we're doing. And uh, this is where like, I don't feel like I need to go schedule out something for two years because I have the initial seven day follow-up pointing back to the same thing. And then Every single week, it's it's a it's a new variation of the same thing, but it keeps it relevant for my audience, right? I'm not um, going through and throwing in a, a YouTube video that was like relevant right now, but in 2025 it's completely irrelevant, and so I'm but it's still in the follow up, so I'm like still pushing that thing. Like every new YouTube video is going to be very relevant for that specific point in time. So kind of going through from the top. We'll start the week on a Friday because that's kind of the, the order that we went through this. Friday is kind of like that splinter weekend promo offer. And so we introduce the offer, um, which by the way, I know a lot of people know Frank Kern in the industry. This is something that he does as well. And um, he calls it his weekend promo, right? And um, this is something like I had already was kind of doing. And then I, like I saw him doing it. We chat a little bit at the, the summit in Dallas. And he's like, yeah, you just got to keep doing what, what was worked. And I was like, you know, that's true. And so I, I, I got back on, I'm like, oh yeah, I, I was doing this on a weekly cadence with uh, my software business. I need to get back onto that. And so um, Friday, initial offer, Saturday, reminder, Sunday, we're closing it down. Monday, last call. Tuesday, send the valuable content. And then Wednesday, this is something that you could do. Like it, it takes a little bit of tracking and some, you know, some things that you could do there, but you can resend to the unopened. So like, for example, if we send out an email, you're usually going to get, depending on your open rates, I don't know, my average is like 30, 35% open rate. Um, and so obviously if you got, let's say 10,000 people, that's only 3,000 to 3,500 opening it, but it's probably still relevant for those people. You took time to make that content. So Let's resend it to the, the rest of the list that didn't open with maybe a different subject line um, to go get more eyeballs on that video because you're creating value. It's not like a salesy, pushy e email. And so then you can get usually another 10 to 15%. So now your 30 to 35% open rate goes to like 40 to 50% open rate, uh, which is amazing, right? And then on Thursday, you send that uh, case study, the testimonial, how things are working well. and then start over the next week, right? So the next weekend, you just have a different splinter offer hook, okay? Tuesday, just a new, like, in, in the, the hooks, the like, the, it can be similar angles, right? Of like, um, it, it's all leading back to your one core offer that we talked about on, on Tuesday, right? It's all leading back to that and just have all these different little hooks of going through and diving in deeper on the value. And then Thursday, it's a new case study. Tuesday, a new valuable video. Uh, Friday to Monday, a new uh, splinter offer that's kind of leading back into that. And this is all the goal of all this. Remember guys is pointing back to sign up for the software, getting that month of recurring revenue, which is the Holy grail to this whole business. Um, and, uh, yeah, so every email has a call to action to get started with the software. 
Okay. You just leverage the hooks to maximize the eyeballs on the offer. And even in my video or my emails that are saying, Hey, go and, uh, check out this video, watch it here. And I put, usually put like no opt-in required every single one of those emails and the PS, I always have some type of like offer or hook to go get them to sign up for the software. Like, Hey, you know, today I'm going to show you how to generate two to five real estate leads per day, step-by-step -step. watch the video here. Um, see you in a second, Jason. And then PS, Oh, by the way, you can still get blah, blah, blah. Um, when you sign up for the, the software here and you'll still, you'll get lots of signups there because you're just getting more eyeballs on that offer. Right. Um, so anyway, just kind of recap guys from all three days here. Uh, the things that really move the needle in my business daily short form piece of content, which we talked about in depth yesterday, how to really simplify that one valuable long form, more in depth piece of content per week. Okay. Which we talked about more today, one testimonial case study per week, one splinter promo per week. And then um, all leads lead into one simple opt-in pushing back to the same core offer, which is to get the software and just rinse and repeat that. It's something simple. Like we talked about the first day, it's something that you should be able to be consistent with. Maybe the first time you're doing it, the very first like month, let's say you're, you've done it four times or so, you're kind of working out some of the kinks because you're like, ah, this is my first time doing it. But then after, you know, month two, three, four, you're like, I'm just in rhythm with this thing. This is a well-oiled machine. This is the systems are in place. I, I can, uh, I can have this really moving and getting new clients and be able to like, actually, you know, the, the common saying of like work on my business as opposed to in my business. Right. And that's the beauty of where you're able to take a step back and actually do the things that are going to move the needle overall and strategize and, uh, be more of the CEO of your business. All right. Um, Paulson, that's, that's basically wraps it up, man. Yeah. So let's do a Q and a, um, I know we have a lot of things to cover on the Q and a, and obviously we'll do essentially a Q and a that covers all items we talked about from day one, day two, day three. So this is going to be essentially a extended Q and a, but before we go further into the Q and a, Jason, can you talk about, um, the offer that we have for the workshop real quick and all the things that you're giving away as we just yeah, get sure. the Q and a, and I'll pull up the questions here. Yeah, for sure. So yeah, we got got some cool stuff for um, this uh, workshop. I'll throw the uh, the link here in the chat here. Actually, I made a simple like you could do launch my dot agency for slash deal. That'll that's if that's easier to type in, or we'll have the link to click out directly to it. Either one. Um, but basically, coming back here is uh, the sales funnel template clone that I showed you guys from day one. You guys are going to be getting that. Basically, everything that I'm I've been showing you guys. Over the last three days, you guys are going to get access to those things, right? Yeah. Um, and so the the AI SaaS agency course, which is going to go into a little bit more depth on how to set a lot of these things up, because you know we talk about lead automation, short form scripts, all that stuff. But um, sometimes people are like, "Well, how do we actually set that up?" Well, the training shows you how to do that. Uh, the AI avatar doc um, plus the training from day one, which just shows you how to get into your specific audience, nail that down, so you know who that is, how to craft your marketing messages there. Uh, short form scripts, we talked about that a lot yesterday. I showed you guys a lot of the scripts there, plus the lead automation setup. Um, and then even the a lot of the email follow-up templates of those first seven days. And then um, the, the the other templates of like, you know, telling people about a valuable content YouTube video or, you know, case study. Those are kind of like, it, it kind of depends on the piece of content. So I don't really have those, um, anything for that. But uh, those are, uh, these are the bonuses that I'll hook everyone up with. Yeah. And then for the people that, uh, you know, so I know that this was asked yesterday, people sign up with my link, which is, you know, the, um, we'll post here in the chat here in a second. Also, I know a lot of people ask me about the real estate stuff. So I've got my real estate agency accelerator, uh, course templates, the whole blueprint of what I did to get 15,000 paying real estate clients and the follow-up, the fulfillment, uh, for all those clients is all in that course. And then um, my affiliate cash flow academy, which is my blueprint of how I've gotten a lot of affiliate signups for high level. And so those two courses, if you guys start a new account with my link or you're upgrading up with uh, my link, we'll hook you guys up with that too. Yeah. And his link is going to be Jason-Wardrobe. 
dash offer. So I think you had that link in day two slide. If you want to share that. Yeah. Let me just, um, let me just grab that really quick. And, and by the way, if you are an existing customer of high level and you just simply want some of the collaterals from the workshop, you could go to gohighlevel.com slash Jason wardrobe resources. So it's going to be the same thing as what's inside of uh, the other link that he showed. I'm going to put that in the chat as well. And um, if you if you don't have the means or you're not ready to upgrade or whatever, but you just want some of the basic collaterals that are part of this workshop and you have an account already, you can go to gohighlevel.com slash Jason wardrobe resources. If you go in there, you'll notice that it's a Google Drive and it's empty right now. Just to warn you, it's empty intentionally. As soon as we get off this workshop, I'm going to go grab lunch. And then afterwards, I'm going to load up everything that me and Jason talked about uh, putting together for all of you that already have an account. Um, so bear with me. Give me a day or so to add everything to it. Uh, that's part of the workshop. So we'll do that. And that's kind of what we do with almost all the workshops for existing users. Um, and uh, Jason, if you can talk about um or uh the oh yeah jason just dropped the offer link which is gohighlevel.com yep. slash jason dash wardrobe wardrop dash offer and what that does is take you to a page that has two different things one says new users right and that allows you to sign up for a 30-day new trial if you don't have a high level account just yet the second option you'll see at the bottom, it says existing users. Now, when you click on the existing user button, it's going to take you in app, have you log in and go through the billing page. And if you upgrade under Jason, he's going to provide the additional bonuses that's part of the workshop. Um, but even if you don't do that and you have an account, maybe you're on the 97 or 297 uh, and even if you're not under Jason, we'll still provide some basic level of collaterals from the workshop to just kind of put you in a place of success, which is going to be at gohighlevel.com slash, let me just go through and make sure that I have the right link here, uh, which is, yep, yeah, gohighlevel.com slash Jason Wardrobe resources, which is a Google Drive. Again, it's empty. I'll load it up here in a second as soon as we're done with Q&A. Um, so Jason, first of all, I just want to thank you for everything that you're doing and giving away a ton of different things. This is not easy. Uh, I know you were feeling hesitant on a couple of items that you're giving. It was like, man, I'm giving away the farm. These are things that I've built for years. So I appreciate um, uh, your generosity, man. Um, so let's go ahead it. and uh, someone said put www. Uh, oh, yeah, you might the the launch my <laughs> dot agency for slash deal. You might need the www. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. Um, can you so first question is from obeyed john. Uh, obeyed's asking, hey, you mentioned uh, a lot about the automated follow up. Any chance you could show some of the automations or text or Facebook, Instagram? So Obey, that's going to be part of the bonuses in the courses that we give away because there's going to be hours of content to go through to kind of show you exactly how the workshop, I mean, the workflows and all of those things are. Jason, can you just speak to what's included in the courses? Maybe that talks about those things, the tech side. Yeah. So, I mean, a quick, quick um, synopsis to answer your question really quickly on the, the follow up. It's pretty simple. It's like they opt in, they get initial email, wait one day, send an email, wait one day, send an email. It's, it's nothing, it's nothing crazy. Um, but yeah, as, as far as like in this snapshot, I have a website that's kind of like a, this is like a nicely designed website. That's kind of like, if you're looking to go sell high level as a, your own software business, that you can just use plug in, just like have ready to go. I have that simple sales funnel um, that we talked about the kind of like three core steps and then I've got, um, it's also got a weekend promo deadline page that you can kind of go through and tweak and duplicate there. Uh, it's got the seven day follow-up sequence. Um, yeah, just some of those basic things. And then, then it's got like, uh, and that's, that's the snapshot inside a high level. And then as far as like some of the other things that we've got for you guys are like, uh, the short form content scripts and templates, the AI avatar doc training, just some stuff that's not like not going to be in high level, right? But they're going to be valuable resources as well. Awesome. Let's see. Um, someone said, Paulson, you kind of confused me. Can you clarify uh, the offers one more time? Sure. 
So just to keep it simple, um, if you don't have a high level account, you can go to, uh, let me pull up the, let me do this. Let me just create a slide here. Uh, let me pull up another question and I'll put together a slide real quick that explains every single link. Uh, let's see. Oh, here's a question, uh, Chris. Chris Jones. Um, Jason, can you talk about how you use SMS, um, voice drops, or any other mediums in addition to email, or whether you use it at all? Is it all email? I know we, you did talk about a lot of it, but can you sh share a little bit about other mediums? Yeah. So I'll be honest. I if when I follow up with people, it's you like with I I mainly just do email. Um, I do texts mainly when somebody buys something from me just to be a little bit more personal. The reason why is I, I have enough friends that have gotten into issues with, even if, even if you're following all the SMS compliance rules, all that stuff, when you're going at scale, like I'm, I'm always going for, um, you just get a lot of, you know, interesting people. And so where, you know, they'll try to sue you for different things or whatever. So I just, I honestly, I kind of stay out of the texting game, but um, I say in the texting game, if, uh, if it, someone's bought something from me and I text them, say like, Hey, did you get what I, you know, did you get everything say yes or no? And then like, I kind of like, will text back and forth to make sure they got what they purchased. Um, whereas, but also at the same time, I am not booking appointments on my calendar, right? I'm not like, I don't have a calendar link. No one can book appointment on my calendar sales team calendar, which I know is a big um, strategy for a lot of other people. That's the way they do it. Whereas like, if I was doing that, I would be texting and following up and doing all that type of stuff, but I'm just primarily email. So, um, yeah, I, I probably am not the best to speak to on best strategies on that. Got it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Jason, can you speak to the difference between the 297 plan and the pro plan? 297, 497? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll kind of just keep it simple. The 297, 497 is like both of them, you have unlimited sub accounts, right? So so for those of you guys who are like kind of new to this, you don't know what a sub account is. So, and I'll bring in the 97 plan because it kind of helps paint the picture of all three of them, I think. So the $97 per month plan, you get three, what are called sub accounts. A sub account is in essence, what you need to run an entire business, right? So like you as an agency owner or a business owner, software owner, whatever you're going to run, it, you can have all your websites, sales funnels, contacts, emails, text messages, all housed in one sub account. And then you have two other sub accounts that you can bring on two other people as clients, whether you're like a coach, a coach, consultant, agency owner, whatever it is, you can bring on those people, right? So that's the definition of a sub account. So on the 297 and 497, both have unlimited sub accounts. So yeah, that's where you know a lot of people ask, well, what's the difference? Well, the difference is on the 297 month plan, you have to manually create those sub accounts, which is not that difficult in the sense of you can create snapshots or basically like a little snapshot picture of like one sub account that has like the website templates, sales funnel templates, email templates that then you can clone into another sub account. So that makes it pretty easy, um, especially if you're not bringing on new clients at scale, right? And so it's like to have, whether you or someone on your team manually create these new sub accounts and upload the snapshot, not that difficult. Where the SaaS really comes into play where that 497 plan is those sub accounts are automatically created, right? Somebody can sign up from your website the sub account is automatically created. They get their login. They can log into their own sub account. The snapshot is automatically connected. So if you're doing any type of scale with signing up clients, that is 100% worth it because whenever I look at software, I look at the, the time that it's saving me. So to go from 297 to 497 per month, that's $200 per month. Whereas let's say I'm bringing on 10 new clients and each client takes, let's say, 30 minutes or an hour to set up. Well, times that number of hours, five to 10 hours by how much you value your time or how much you're paying somebody else. And I can almost guarantee you, 
it's going to be more than that $200 per month, right? So like, it's just, it's a total time saver. So basically those are the two core differences. They're both unlimited, but it's like manual sub account creation versus automated. And then the 497 plan not only has automated, but you can also do some cool rebilling stuff where it's like, you can mark up text message sends, email sends, and some different uh, usage of the software to make some more money. Awesome. So I think um, I've organized all the um, links together while you were speaking and I'm going to share my screen. So uh, Jason, you may want to correct me on this if I'm wrong, uh, feel free to. So if you see my screen here, just give me a one. Okay, cool. Uh, so new users with that high level go to, and you get a 50% off deal that's happening right now, which we never do. <laughs> just FYI, 50% yep. off of the first three months. And then you go into the normal plan. Uh, which is at www.gohighlevel.com slash Jason dash wardrop dash offer. That's step one. If you are a brand new user or someone who doesn't have high level, it doesn't matter what plan you get 50% off on any plan. It's 97 to 97, 497, doesn't matter. Existing users that wants to upgrade and receive additional bonuses from Jason, you can go to the same exact link, and there'll be a second option in that funnel page that says existing users. There's two call to actions in that funnel. If you go existing users, it's gonna ask you to log into the app. When you go in app, it's gonna take you to the billing. All you're gonna do is upgrade to the next higher plan. So that means if you're already on the 97, you move up to 297. If you're on 297, you move up to 497. Okay, and if you're already on 497, or if you're an existing user, essentially that doesn't want to upgrade anything, maybe not at this time, you can go to gohighlevel.com slash Jason Wardrop resources. Now, Jason, can you ex elaborate a little bit of the additional bonuses that you're providing for folks that are signing up under you on the upgrade, just to be clear? Yeah, for people sign up under me, under me. Yeah, so I've got uh, my real estate program. Um, that's kind of what a lot of people know me for, for the real estate stuff. And so like that's all of the sales funnels, templates, trainings of like how to run your own business and how to get clients. And then I also have snapshots, funnels, templates of once you get a real estate client, how are you actually fulfilling for them? So step-by-step -step what uh, we do there. And then, so that's the real estate program and then um, the the affiliate program. So um, yeah. also a lot of people know me for being a big high level affiliate. Um, and so I've got my, my course is basically like, I, I stopped, I stopped selling. I used, I sold it for about 60 <laughs> days for one K. And then I was like, I'm not, not sharing this stuff anymore. Unless there are um, people that are signed up under me. And so yeah. you also get that. It's, a, it's called my affiliate cash flow Academy. And yeah. it's like my templates, trainings, step-by-step -step process, what I do there. Yeah. So you definitely want to take advantage of it because if you upgrade, you're going to be in a good place to either go into um, a full-on industry like real estate, and you can take examples from it, apply to other industries as well, just FYI. Yep. Yep. And Jason's, uh, Jason's affiliate course, which he doesn't like giving out, which I'm, I'm like twisting his hand to give out, which I appreciate because people love it. Um, and then let's say you're in a place where you already have an existing high level account, um, but you love some of the content that you've had here in the workshop you can just get the regular um, collaterals that are part of this workshop, which is at, is going to be at gohighlevel.com slash Jason Wardrop resources. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Jason, if you want to share your screen that you just shared, that's what everybody is getting if they don't upgrade, right? So the, the 2K, go back to the screen that you were sharing on day three. Um, um, one second. I think I, think I, think I, I just want to just reiterate that's what, you're getting this you, one right here. Yeah, that's the one you get yeah. if you if you're not upgrading or anything, just being part of the attendance. Uh, of and, the and there's another there's other, uh, there's one other program that I've totally forgot. It's called my agency partner program, and it's it's how to go and build an eight. It's like this one's very focused on like AI, how we're leveraging AI, doing a lot of this stuff that we've been talking about the last several days. Uh, but the agency partner program is basically you want to start a an agency, SaaS agency in any industry, any niche, like. Um, how to go through and get clients, 
the core services that I would suggest um, going through and getting started and offering to really build. It's it's really more. Um, I call it the agency partner program because most people like, um, you know, relate to it, starting an agency, but it's really how to leverage more of the software, the SaaS side of things, um, which is, you know, I, that's the part I love. So that's also what you all be uh, getting as another bonus. Got it. Okay. Awesome. So that kind of reiterates uh, the links. And then let me go ahead and share my screen here again, Jason. So people are right. up. All right, cool. I'll just leave that up for anybody that wants to look at it. So let's go through Q&A here. Um, let's see. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Uh, let me see if I can start seeing the questions in the comments. It's always easier on the phone. <laughs> let's see. Okay. Right, let's see. Yeah, the, the folder, the Google Drive folder, again, it's going to be empty and it's intentionally empty because I haven't uploaded everything. As soon as we get off of this workshop, I'm going to go ahead and grab everything from Jason's side and the team. And we're going to have that uh, before end of day today. Okay, uh, let's see questions here. Uh, Stephen William is asking, uh, Jason, you mentioned about dental videos. Do you have any resources or any industry related resources for videos that you can recommend or inspiration? Like how, how did you come up with dental videos? Um, dental was it, that was a, that was a project. I was just kind of getting my feet wet into, uh, I was built the, I, I, long story short, not specifically what I was doing. I was building a big old dental website. It was like an 800 plus page website. The idea was to get a ton of leads, be able to sell those to dentists. And I was creating YouTube videos to be able to point back to the website. Um, and what I did was ha I was, you know, hiring someone probably in the Philippines. I, I can't even remember, but they make like these little 90 second videos. And uh, I mean, YouTube was way different back. I mean, that was over 10 years ago. <laughs> and so yeah. they weren't valuable videos whatsoever. They were just like a little background noise and like slides just changing with text on them. Like that was like someone made it for me and then I would just upload them and some <laughs> of them rank. So yeah, I, I mean, I, I guess I don't know what you specifically mean on the question there, but that was kind of the background of why I was doing the dental videos. Got it. So uh, Robert Till is asking, Paulson, can you touch base on how you discuss the selling point of an operating system rather than a CRM? Is it a better pitch this as a marketing software or like a business operating system? As soon as I say anything about CRM, I lose them. Um, so when I say operating system, that is from high level to you as the provider. You don't need to go build an operating system. Um, matter of fact, not even a CRM for most businesses because they're not that advanced. Um, so the when I say operating system, I was talking about high levels, future and the world that we're thinking of, of ourselves and how we look at ourselves to the agency owners, course creators, you know, the entrepreneurs, the consultants, the business owners that are working here today. Um, and yeah. I would say never call it a CRM unless yeah. in real estate, CRM is actually a pretty common term. So like you can get away with that sometimes, but don't call it a CRM. Like don't like, yeah, don't, don't call things a lot of times what their actual names are. Like describe like the like the idea the concept like yeah you could store all of your contacts or something like that in, into the software like more, something that's going to more relate it's going to be different for every industry but you want to be able to have that connect back to them yeah uh someone's asking how can you upgrade if you're already on the 497 plan yeah so if you're already on the 497 plan just go directly to the google drive link and you'll get uh, the bonuses we talked about. Give me like a couple of hours to load everything up, but it, you'll have all those. Uh, it'll, it'll be a Google Doc with all the links in it. So uh, I'll, I'll I'll touch base with Jason hereafter and just make sure all those things are in place. And someone mentioned um, also Joel Kaplan's folder was empty. So I'll look into that. Uh, we just did a workshop with Joel. So I'll double check that. I was out on vacation, and just came back uh, literally two days ago. Um, so I'll follow up with you on making sure those things are promised that, uh, that's already there. Let's see. Um, let's see, Jason, do you use third-party support businesses of any kind like Extendly or HL Pro Tools or any other third-party 
uh, businesses to run your business or recommend any of them. Um, and I don't have a bias towards any one of them. Yeah. Just for me, just FYI. <laughs> I, I personally, I personally don't, I see the, I see the value in them. Um, I don't, the reason being is because one, I'm not running a typical like white labeled SaaS agency. Like that's like kind of like their normal flow. So I'm like, I'm not a normal customer for them. I I've looked into it a little bit um, before in the past, but what ended up being easier for me is just hiring my own people and training them on just my stuff. And so now they're not like, like it, it's, it's good. I, I feel like it's good if like you kind of, you're getting started out and to kind of get your feet wet and stuff. But then once you kind of get to a certain point, it's probably good to bring on your own people and have them like train on your specific SOPs and resources and the way you run your business. And so they're only working on your business as opposed to like your business and, you know, 10, 12 others. That's, yeah. that's my personal opinion. And I agree. Um, even like Frank Kern, we did a workshop with Frank Kern not too long ago. And he kind of said the same thing initially when he was launching because high level was essentially, you know, really overwhelming, which is understandable. Um, he went with some of those third party resources and then he brought everything in house. Right. And at the end of the day, you don't want to build tech in someone else's house is what they say. Um, and uh, I, I kind of like that because I would rather control the experience of the customer internally and make sure I'm in touch with the customer quite a bit um, versus outsourcing a lot of it. So, but yeah, there are a couple of companies that you can look into. By the way, uh, High Level, we launched um, our first ever certifications program not too long ago, maybe two, three weeks ago. You may not need a big company. You may be able to get a freelancer that's certified with High Level that can kind of go through and make sure things are in place, especially in the beginning. It's probably a lot more um, cheaper and a little bit more intimate as far as relationship, because some of those big third-party companies have thousands of high-level agencies that they're serving. So uh, it, it's very easy to become a number. Uh, and even though that's not the case in most scenarios, it's possible, especially when they serve um, massive numbers. Uh, let's see. Uh, question for Jason, can you explain the rebilling services? You said what uh, you said rebilling and what gets re rebuilt. Uh, what do you mean by rebilling in general and how does people make money on that is kind of confusing is what Carolina said. Oh, on like the usage stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, so basically there are, so like you have high levels of software, right? So like you're paying 97, 297, 497 a month for your business. And then you go through on the 497 month plan, you can create software plans where you can be reselling high level as your own white label, like your own logo for let's say 300 bucks a month, right? Well, that's to go through and be able to use the software, but then there are things like sending out texts or emails that, that that's like a more on a per usage basis. Like some accounts might send out 10 emails and some might send out 10,000 or 10 texts or 10,000. And so high level, they like you send them out through their platform, but they're not the ones actually sending them out. So they have like third party relationships with these um, platforms that will send them out like Twilio, SendGrid. And so what they've done to make it easy is that you can just go and tap into their master account, but they're paying, they're basically, they're paying for those email SMS sends. But then saying, okay, like they're, they're having a slight markup to, for you so that they're making a little, so they're not like, you know, basically paying for all your email SMS sends. But then if you have a client on and they're, let's say some uh, dentist and they're sending out 10,000 text messages a month, then you can actually say, Hey, high level, let's say is, is paying a penny to Twilio. Um, I'm paying two cents to high level so that, you know, they're not eating all the costs. But then I'm going to charge my dentist five cents, right? So you're making now the difference of the five cents minus the two cents, so three cents for every email sent. And that's just an example. Like you're, there's a little toggle, and you can go through and say if you want to mark it up or not. You don't even have to mark it up, um, or you know, like how much you want to mark it up. Some people do like ten times that. So like anytime a text message is sent out, like they're making ten times the amount, but they're you know they're charging a little bit lower on the monthly subscription, but making all the money on the the usage. So that's kind of how the, the usage works. Hopefully that uh, made some sense there. Yeah. Um, Eric is asking, can we set our own pricing for sub accounts? And in addition, um, Jason, what is your recommendation for SaaS pricing? I know you talked about 
Podium, Thrive, you know, even companies like Salesforce that go a little bit into the local space. Um, what what are the price points that you've seen maybe some of your SaaS students um, launch with or even common practices that you see um, in general? Yeah. Yeah. So, re- so it, it really depends on your market and what you're offering, right? And then also like a big thing with... Um, the price point is one thing and you can get in like, oh, if I get a thousand people paying $200 a month, I'm making all this money. But like, you got to be able to fulfill and give the value for what the price is, right? And so you got to not only be able to sell and speak to that value, but then also deliver upon that value. And so like for, for me in the real estate space, we would go through and sell for $200 per month. And we had a, we had a fairly robust system that people are getting access to quite a few things. Um, a little bit more than that, like, especially we were selling to the individual solo residential real estate agent. It, it's going to be hard for them to, to really make sense of anything more than that. Right. Whereas if I was selling to a real estate broker, real estate team lead, you know, $500 for, you know, let's say five, 10 users, it's not out of the question. Right. So it really kind of, and I know this is never a great answer, but it really does depend on your market and what, what, what they're willing to pay and what they're able to pay and based on the value. The thing, another thing I love about high level is you look at companies like Weave or Podium or Thrive, like all these different um, platforms, they're, they're charging, you know, not, not a ton, two, three, $400 a month. But then also with that two, three, $400 per month, and obviously they're, they're at, you know, scale, they're at thousands and ten, tens of thousands of users, but they're also having to pay for a full development team, full, like, you know, C-suite, like all these, like very expensive payroll, right? Whereas you should be able to offer significantly more value for a very competitive price because your hard costs are 500 bucks a month, right? And so the ability to compete with these other platforms even though they got, you know, the deep pockets because they raised a ton of money and they've got all these users, the big name branding, well, they're not going to serve their customer as well as you can. And they're going to have to charge certain price. And I'm not saying undercut them on price. I'm not saying that by any means, but it's pretty easy for you to go through and toggle maybe one more feature over or like just do one extra thing to make to make the difference of being that much more valuable. So I, I like the... Personally, I like the two to five hundred dollar per month range. I think that's a pretty good range. You know, you can go down as low as a hundred dollars per month. Um, my experience, even in real estate, uh, where it's like maybe a lot of people that are a little more tire kickers, not as much of a, a budget. Um, you're not going to have that much of a difference in drop off from a hundred to two hundred. Yet it's two times the amount of money, right? And so, like, you're able to just be that much more profitable slash deliver a much better solution and service because you're able to hire better people and implement things that are going to be more valuable to your customer because you have more money coming in as opposed to having more of like the, well, I'm just going to try to charge a hundred dollars and just like bring as many, like, well, in order to bring in volume and scale, you need kind of a little bit of a budget to be able to do that. Right. Yeah. Which is, it's just difficult at the, that low of a price point. Yeah. And by the way, for those of you that are starting out and you're trying to launch your SaaS, we have something called the five day challenge. And we do those literally every other week. So we have a new cohort starting next Monday, I believe. And what we do is teach people how to get their first SaaS customer. And we do that through missed call text back. We provide all the snapshots, all the goodies. I teach a lot of the marketing and the sales behind it as well. And they're live sessions, by the way, uh, just like this. And usually a couple of hundred, sometimes even thousands of people jump in. Uh, I think we had 12 or 13,000 agencies go through it. We launched it as a beta a few months ago. We're about to go to the market full blown with it here shortly and even uh, let the world know about it because there's some really cool results we're seeing with it. Um, Bob is asking for an agency, Jason, what kind of pre-subscription lead magnet do you recommend offering to get people on your list? who uh, essentially would lead to software, but what are some lead magnets or maybe gateway offers or something, you know, the dangling carrot is what he's asking. I think that's a good question. Yeah. So it, it, it's, you're going to want it to be um, kind of a, a lead into your, your core offer. 
Um, and, and we kind of talked about this day one. So I can go back and review some of the stuff as far as like what the offer is and what are some things that you can go through and give away. Um, but it could be like something like uh, templates, right? Like I remember with real estate, we would do like, hey, download our Facebook ad templates, right? Or our email follow-up templates. Those were two that we would use um, or like a, a free training where we're going to show you how to do whatever they want to um, make happen, right? It could be a live or a replay, like an automated training, something like that. Um, a case study, right? Kate, let me show you how this, you know, insert industry client um, got this desired end result. And we'll show you step-by-step step, like the, how, how we made it happen. Um, so th those are some, those are some ones that I like. Um, another one I, I talked about was like having a course, like a free course. And, uh, the, the pros and cons of that is like, sometimes like, especially if you're getting into an agency offer where it's more of like a done for you, like not everyone wants to go through a course or cares about a course. They just want it done for them. So that's not like always the best lead in, right. Where it's like more of a training workshop case study. Uh, downloads, templates are kind of like, just like those quick, easy wins are, are usually some good ones. Yeah. And, and back in my dental days, what we used to do was provide personal branding kits to dentists. Uh, Cause in a local area, they, everything is built around the personal brand of that dentist, no matter how they brand it, they're not going to be able to get away from the person that is the dentist. So we would do we provide these personal branding kits and then uh, follow up with the audit, uh, SEO audits. Back in the day, we had SEO audits we would like go to these random websites and generate. Now we can do that inside high level. There's a prospecting tool that generates an audit for you in a local area for free and just send it over to them. Uh, but those are typical things that we used to do. So it's going to be relevant to the market, right? Personal branding doesn't apply 100%. to every market. Um, um, but but there are creative things you can do in almost every single thing. Um, yes, those of you that are saying the Google Drive link is empty, uh, just want to remind you one more time, uh, I'm going to go eat lunch before I go fill all that up. I'm hungry, but we will go ahead and add everything to it um, that is part of the collaterals from the workshop. Now, if you upgrade under Jason to a higher plan, Jason will provide additional courses, which is the affiliate course that he has, the real estate course, and the agency partner course. If I if I didn't get that wrong, please correct me. Um, those yeah, are the, that's great. The three extra bonuses that you will get if you sign up under Jason. But if you don't, no worries. If you have an existing plan already, you can go directly to the high level Google Drive that's set up for customers like yourself, where we'll upload almost every collateral from every workshop. Again, replays are going to be provided inside um, the YouTube channel as well. And by the way, um, I think holiday offers for that 50% off. I, I'm not trying to be urgent or scarce. We really mean it. It's about to end. I think tomorrow might be the last day. Friday this week, I think it could be the last day. Um, maybe Jordan, if you can confirm with me on, I think it's January 5th, which is tomorrow. Midnight CST is uh, probably when the holiday offer ends. Um, but I know the workshop offer will end then because we usually only leave it open for a week. Um, let's see. Paulson, yeah. one, one question I keep seeing coming through, um, which I think will be good to address is a lot of people that are talking about upgrading. So like if you're, if you're brand new to high level, you get the 50% off the first three months deal. And a lot of people are saying, if we upgrade, is it also 50% off? And from what I understand, it's not, it, there is a discount, but it's not a 50% off. Is that correct? I mean, Paulson, you might know. I think it is 50% off. It is if you yeah, upgrade I think, on oh, I think okay fifty percent off, but you'll basically do a double bill there. Yeah, so you okay. prorate. So let's say today you sign up for a new account for ninety seven dollars, right? And then let's say five days later you upgrade to the four ninety seven. The initial five days that you were on that ninety seven will get prorated instead of okay. the full ninety seven. So you'll get your money back from the original account from what I know, and you'll get it that credited to your upgrade. So yeah, you, you are going to get 50% off if you upgrade as well. Okay. So if someone, if someone's been on high level for three years, they're on the 297 a month plan, want to upgrade to 497, it's still going to be 50% off that 497. Be, but that, 
but the proration will kick in. And this is some of the things that we completely automate for you in the SaaS plan for your end customers, right? Because proration and billing is like the biggest challenge for software companies often. So yeah, whatever your monthly bill is, that bill, that month's bill will get prorated and you'll get moved up to the next cycle, which I totally recommend. You're not going to get a hold of a great real estate agency partner and affiliate program <laughs> that often. So I truly think everybody should upgrade uh, pretty quickly here under Jason so you can take advantage of that. Um, but let me go to the next question here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, well, so Naman is asking, what's the difference between the resources provided as the regular resources versus the additional bonus? The If you sign up under Jason as uh, an, an upgrade under Jason uh, with that link, you'll get the affiliate course, the real estate course, as well as the agency partner course. If you don't, no problem. You'll get all the snapshots, the SaaS course, and everything that we talked about in this workshop in the regular Google Drive. Give me a few hours to draw, you know, load all that up. Um, and I'll go ahead and follow up on Joel Kaplan's workshop. People are saying uh, Joel stuff is not fulfilled yet. So I'll go through. I was on vacation, so I came back literally day before yesterday. So I'll go through and double check all that. Make sure you guys get everything you want. Worst case scenario, you can always jump into our success room and support chat and a live agent. Like we have live Zoom rooms that happen literally nonstop, 24 seven. You can just jump into and talk to a real human being as quick as you want. Okay, let's see. Um, all right, let's see. Um, our, Arisai Rosa San Diego is asking, um, when Jason said done for you setup, what exactly does his team set up? Which is a great question because that onboarding setup is really critical to making sure your customers are stable. Can you elaborate that whole experience uh, in general, Jason? Yeah, for sure, man. Um, so it really, it really depends on what your offer is, right? Um, of what you're setting up. And so that's kind of where... I know, I know a lot of times I'm like getting to like, it depends, but it really does depend. It's like, that's where, I don't know. Sometimes I say things and I don't want people to take it like, oh, that's the only way to do things. Right. And so what we were doing was we were selling, um, a lot of lead generation to real estate agents. Right. So I, I'm just going back to my, um, examples. Cause that's just like what I know is from my experience and stuff. So what we would do is look at, okay, we're selling them this uh, desired end result of generating leads. So what do they need to have to get that desired end result? So that's that's always like kind of when you're going through and setting someone up, that's always what you got to work back into, right? Okay, you're selling them how to get more reviews. Well, what do you need to do to do that, right? And so we're selling them how to get leads. So in order to do that, we were integrated in with uh, with Facebook ads. So it was kind of like an UPEX type, If for those of you guys that are familiar with UPEX built into our software. And then we also had like kind of the workflows aspect of email, text, follow-ups um, for all the lead campaigns that came through. And so we knew, okay, if, if someone's brand new, well, we need to get some like, we need to get something moving, right? So we're going to set up a, a Facebook ad. We've got all these templates that we know work and we'd set them up for like 10 bucks a day because we knew that was like a good budget to get going where even if you're like new, it could still something that you could handle. And so we would have some on our team set up the Facebook ad have it, you know, it was already integrated into our software that then like the leads would drip into our CRM. And then with the email SMS follow-up was already tied to that ad. And so basically like, well, and what we did is, I mean, obviously it was a custom development, but like you can do the same in a high level where based on our offer, what we had, what we knew worked, we went and built out the software to simplify the setup and the delivery. And it got to the point where it's like, yeah, we, we had a lot of scale. We were able to scale because when we're doing these done for you one-on-one -on -one setups. It was like somebody come in, connect their Facebook ad account or for their Facebook account. And then from inside of our software, our account rep could then go and like click a few buttons. And in three clicks, they could have the, the ad account or the, the Facebook ad set up, the email SMS follow-up that's all customized to their business, their location, everything. And so we were able to like knock it out super quick, right? And that was the beauty of, of software being able to assist in that. And so, yeah, it's basically just going through, looking at what your, what's, what the offer is that's connecting with your audience. 
and, um, and what they're wanting to have happen. And then what do you need? What are the, the core steps that you need to take and have set up for them so that they're going to see the result that you promised? Love that. Um, I'm going through more questions here. Let's see. Um, I know, I know a lot of times I get like, let's see here. Uh, someone said, Hey, just like you, Jason, congrats. I got banned from running Facebook ads as well. Love it. Uh, how are you using Facebook? Are you organically posting or how are you leveraging Facebook when you cannot run ads? I would say go watch the training yesterday because <laughs> I went for about two hours on what I'm doing on Facebook yesterday. <laughs> Basically I'm doing, I'm doing Facebook reels on Facebook business pages and automating all that. Uh, but yeah, I, I broke that down in like a lot of detail yesterday. Got it. Yeah. Here's another person asking something similar. What caused you to get banned and what are some things you recommend? So you like just from a proactive standpoint to not get banned from platforms in general. I mean, be aware of the terms of service, privacy policies. Honestly, I don't, I, I still don't know why I was banned. And I even like, I... <laughs> Through connections, I got like some, I paid someone under the table that actually works at Facebook and they were like, I had, I had Facebook. I mean, I had spent over like 2 million on Facebook ads. So like I had a number of reps. I was like talking to people fairly high up and they're like, I, I don't know, like yeah. you should be good. It, it, the big thing that came out in, in real estate, there was a special ad category and there was a lot of debate on like whether I had to use it or not. Because like special ad category is for real estate agents selling homes, right? So like my clients had to do special ad category, but theoretically I should not have had to. And all the reps I talked to, everyone would say like, no, you shouldn't have to. Um, and so anyway, there, it, sometimes you just don't know. And then sometimes, and, and that's the thing is like things out of your control. You can't get too caught up in it and uh, you just kind of got to just move on. So. Yeah. And then the other thing is every one of these platforms have a advertising guiding policy. So if you look it up, research it, um, you can find information about it, but just remember that they change quite often. Every three months, every four months, they're changing. So you kind of have to keep up with it. Um, and certain industries will always have a hard time because uh, it affects the user base. If Like e-commerce, for example, it's nearly impossible to advertise on Facebook often because Facebook does not want you to use it as a marketplace, which is why they have a separate marketplace. Um, but either way, uh, let's see. Uh, um, let's see. I see a few comments. I did see here. I'll address these. I, I know there's several people. I've seen them in the, the comments that are like, why don't we get all the bonuses? We're already on the 497. And, and I'll, I'll just be transparent on that. So first of all, everything that we talked about the last three days, you guys like, it doesn't matter. Everyone's going to get them, right? Like if they're going to get the snapshots, you're going to get the whole blueprint. And that's like very much like what's working right now for me. And that's like what I'm doing. And so to me, if you've been on this three-day workshop and you're like, oh, this is good. I want more of, the, of this. Um, that's going to be right in long, long lines, right? Um, the, the other things where it's like the real estate program um, and the affiliate programs, I'm not giving those away to everyone. One, because it, it's a little bit of like just even integrity with my own community. Like I can't go like someone who's paid like a thousand, two thousand dollars for these programs. I personally can't in my right mind just go give those away to everyone just because I want to give them away. And, and it's not even a money thing, to be completely honest. It's, it's not. It's more about integrity with my community and having exclusivity bonuses and offers for people that jump in with me. And I know that's tough. And, and it's, you know, if you're already on the 497 plan, you want the real estate one or the affiliate one, whatever. I, I really don't even sell the affiliate one. So, but if you email me, Jason at jasonwardrobe.com. We'll figure out something with the real estate um, one if you guys really are wanting that. Um, I think it's a pretty good program because it, it worked really well for me. Um, and, and then the affiliate one, I, I, I'll just be transparent on that as well. The reason why I stopped selling that is the idea was High Level has a tier two, 5% affiliate plan, right? So I was like, if I get all these people signing up, 
I show them my blueprint. I'm going to make a lot on the tier two, 5% because I'm showing people how to do this. Well, in the first 60 days, um, I had probably, well, not in the first 60 days, but I only sold it for 60 days. We had seven people, six or seven people that hit top 10 leaderboard in the, the next year, right? <laughs> it wasn't immediate, but over the next year. And um, I think maybe one of them was signed up directly under me. So like only one of them, I got the tier two, 5%. So that one, yeah, you could say is maybe a little more selfishly on the, the money side, but, but also like, I want to keep it like kind of as a, an exclusive thing for, for my community as a little bit of a bonus there, but not to say a lot of the things that you guys will be getting with this, um, AI SaaS agency one, even the ag agency partner program, even if you're already on the 497, like there's still, there's still tremendous value in there. And those are especially the AI SaaS agency accelerated one. That is like, I would say the most current up to date of what I'm doing right now of what's working. So as far as like, I don't know, I think that's, that's incredibly valuable and you can tailor it to any of these industries, right? Especially even like the real estate one, my blueprint, my, like my webinars, my follow funnels, all those things. If you're like, oh, I don't want to do real estate, but I want to do something else. The crazy thing is, is for the longest time I was marketing that. And I would just put agents in the ads because I was thinking real there's only real estate agents, right? And I built up a list of probably 1500 insurance agents because they just saw <laughs> agents and brokers. And so like, I was like, hmm, well, I'll just run with this. And I did like a webinar to insurance agents and brokers. I just changed all the copy and terminology to a insurance. And uh, that actually converted really well. But then I was like, you know what? I, I don't want to get sidetracked and keep with real estate. So anyway, um, there's my long tangent rant of uh, why not the bonuses for the 497, but uh, I think there's still going to be some uh, crazy value with the AI SaaS agency accelerator uh, yeah. for you guys getting in. I appreciate the truthful answer, Jason, and just mm -hmm. clarify that because I was getting that question just uh, multiple times, and I knew I knew you uh, saw. I knew you were just ignoring it, so I was like, well, you know, I'm what? It's gonna go through. I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll jump in. I, I'm not afraid of anything, man. I appreciate it because uh, the, the reason why is because we do these workshops for free. We're not charging them. And, you know, we bring in top players and I'm not, I didn't, I didn't ask Jason to give anything away to be, to be frank. I didn't ask him to do anything, but just teach what he's doing. That's relevant today. No snapshots, no nothing. I didn't ask him to set, give away anything. So just the fact that he's giving you away most things is totally appreciated. And I know a ton of people will get a lot of value out of it. There are a couple of more questions that are coming in. Uh, Nick, Nikki Nicole's asking, are you running ads to sell or grow your list or your followers in addition to the organic strategy? So great question. Um, and Nikki, I, what's up? I see you in the Facebook group a lot. So I don't think we met in person, but what's up? Um, so most of 2023, actually pretty much all of 2023, I did not... Um, really run any paid ads. It was just the organic stuff. It was working so well. Um, then the kind of Q4, like November, December, I rewrote a new webinar to go launch, like um, just, just to get out there for paid ads and literally just started paid ads yesterday. Um, so I'm going to be running paid <laughs> ads in for this year. So like, so I mean, the, the organic stuff still works extremely well. That's it's still what I'm doubling down on. I, like, you know, if it, if it works to just keep doing it. Right. And so like it, that works extremely well, but, um, to kind of maximize the volume and scale, I'm like, uh, I'll throw some money at this too. So also we'll be doing, but yeah, I won't be doing any Facebook or Instagram ads. Um, unfortunately, uh, but just mainly YouTube ads. So if you go on YouTube, you'll probably see me, um, there a little bit. Got it. So what we'll do is this, um, I'm seeing a lot of questions around uh, the offer itself. So just to reiterate, um, if you don't have high level, let me just share my screen. So that way it's very clear. Um, if you don't have high level, jump into this first link here, you get 50% off into any high level plan. If you are an existing user that wants to upgrade under Jason uh, today, or I think it ends tomorrow, uh, to receive the additional bonuses, you go to the same offer page link, and there's a second option in that landing page that says existing users. It'll ask you to log in in-app if you already have an existing account, and you'll go into billing and upgrade under Jason, and we'll track that. And the additional bonuses you get is the affiliate course Jason has that he don't know is kind of discontinued. 
the real estate course, as well as the agency partner program. Uh, if you don't are in a place that you want to upgrade for any reason, which is totally fine, you can directly go to gohighlevel.com slash Jason Wardrop resources. That folder, again, is going to be empty. I am going to spend the next couple of hours loading up all the snapshot links, the instructional videos for the snapshots, all the additional links that's attached to the regular giveaway that we're doing. Just because you're attending the workshop, I'll have all that loaded in there. In addition, if you are interested in talking to Jason for whatever reason to get some of those real estate or affiliate courses, he 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 said, just reach out to him on the support. What was your email again, Jason? I just threw it in the, the Zoom chat, at least. So from Facebook, it's just jason at jasonwardrop.com. Okay, cool. Right. Um, and there's anyway. no, there's no guarantee there. He's going to fill it and figure out from there of what we can, what he can do. And that kind of has nothing to do with high level, but Jason, I appreciate you being generous there and being available to hear those out. Um, yeah, of course. So as we kind of close out, Jason, first of all, thank you for doing this, man. This is quite the fun. I know you had a vacation Florida trip that got rescheduled and I was on vacation as well. And came yeah, no, it's all good, man. It's logistics. It's good. Well, thanks for having me. It's been fun hanging out these last three days. Uh, hopefully um, people got some value. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, and as we close out, if you can address one last thing is, and I asked this for essentially all my workshops, webinars, podcasts, everything to almost everybody that I bring on. I ask him, hey, what do you say to the entrepreneur that wants to grow? What can they do to grow? Um. Think about this a lot. Um, it, it so there's a book called uh, "The Score Takes State Takes Care of Itself" or something like that by I don't know some football coach like Bill Walsh maybe um, can't re- anyway some football coach back in the day and basically the whole concept of it is if you like so many people focus on the monetary value like make a hundred k this year make a million bucks and that's like you know, watching David Goggins motivational videos and that's going to get me there and this and that. And it's like, that's not, that's not it. If you focus on the core things that actually matter, the score will take care of itself, right? The money will come in in the sense of like just being patient with it. So it's like in, in every, in everything, you got to just focus on like, Okay. Like even I was actually even thinking about this, like the last couple of days with just like fitness, you know, new year's goals and all that stuff. And it's like, it's not even like a weight number or anything like that. Or it's, it's like, if you focus on like eating healthy, if you focus on like getting in the gym, moving your body, getting some like movement going, the score will take care of itself. Like you will like just naturally, um, start to feel and look better and all that stuff. Right. And so the same thing with like business, it's like, okay, what are the core things? Like maybe it's not nutrition and getting in the gym and all that stuff, but the the core things are like what we talked about, right? Like consistent lead flow, right? What are we going to do to get consistent lead flow, which we talked about this week. And then once we have consistent lead flow, how are we going to consistently present an offer to those leads, right? And then continually follow up with those leads. And if we focus on like those three core things right there, I guarantee everyone like the score will take care of itself. And and like, and yeah, you might not be going through and like, oh, I want, I'm starting at zero. I want to make a million bucks this year. You might not make a million bucks this year, right? You probably won't you're, if you're brand new at this, but it will get you farther than if you're just focusing on um, watching David Goggins videos and I'm going to be a millionaire and trying to get a Lambo and all like that stuff. Like it, it can come if that's what you want, but if you focus on the core thing, so that's, that's kind of what I would recommend if you're beginner getting started and then just last thing, like just take action and do it right. Just be willing to like be an action taker. Don't let fear or procrastination or whatever it is get in the way to keep you from just jumping in and getting started. And, and if you're kind of fearful, like, I don't want to be like personal brand on camera. Best part about the beginning is no one's watching you anyway. So while you suck <laughs> and while you're getting better, no one cares and no one's watching. So you, you got a lot of reps to get in to improve. And then once people are watching, you're, you're probably going to be somewhat decent.
Absolutely. I love that. And and for me, the theme that I have for myself uh, for 2024 is uh, the bridge between where I am to where I want to be is going to be discipline. That's the bridge. Discipline yep. is the bridge that will take me from my current business to my desired business, my current relationship to my desired relationship, my current finances condition versus my desire, my current, you know, status in the society versus what my desired is, my current impact versus my desired impact. is. It all comes down to discipline. And uh, if you yep. can have any takeaway, uh, I hope these words uh, have encouraged you. Uh, Jason, thank you again. And we'll go ahead and close up shop. And next week, guys and gals, we have our next round of five-day challenge running and happening. Uh, again, our certification programs are live. Our mastermind, by the way, uh, we have our mastermind February, I think, 8th, 9th. There's like a cover picture inside the Facebook group. It's about to be sold out. <laughs> Don't wait till February. It's about to be sold out. Our masterminds are super cool. People come in from all over the world, usually only about 100 people. Uh, we intentionally keep it very intimate. We go all in with them. The founders are going to be there. The leadership team is going to be there. You're going to learn a ton of different things. We bring in power players. I think Mike Cooch and Krista Mashor, Mashor is coming in to be our power speakers. Those guys, they're doing like million dollars a month uh, in SaaS and real estate and all kinds of cool, crazy, crazy numbers that you're going to learn from. So Grab a ticket, jump uh, into the mastermind. If you don't, if you have never been to one of our high level events, uh, we take a lot of pride in those. Uh, but anyways, Jason, thank you. Have a good rest of your week. I'll follow up with you. Again, the Google Drive will be filled up with things. Give me a couple of hours um, and we'll follow up there. But anyways, replays are going to be on YouTube channel. Jason, how can people find you? Um, your Instagram handle, TikTok, YouTube. Yeah, like, just, just go, to make sure, just type yeah. in. Type in Jason Wardrop on YouTube. That's probably the best place um, yeah. to find me. Um, go subscribe if you want to. That'd be cool too. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's YouTube's best place where I post the most, the most consistent on stuff. Um, but yeah, okay. thanks, Paulson, for having me. It's right. been awesome. Bye, everybody. Take care. Have a good rest of your yeah. day. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later.